welcome everyone we are going to start a new chapter in today's session that is plant kingdom which is chapter number 3 11th ncert now plant kingdom and animal kingdom are basic botany and zoology chapters we need to have understanding about these chapters now i have already written the content on the board which is there in ncert so it will save us our time uh, like in two kingdom classification the two kingdoms are one is plant kingdom other one is animal kingdom on what basis they have done plant kingdom and animal kingdom means the organisms which are having cell wall all the organisms which are having cell wall are kept under plant kingdom those organisms which are not having cell wall are kept under animal kingdom our understanding about plant kingdom kept changing from time to time because when three kingdom uh, was been established then all the unicellular organisms from plant kingdom only they were removed and kept under protista by ernst haeckel when four kingdom classification came then all the unicellular prokaryotic organisms were kept under kingdom called monera and when uh, five kingdom classification came whitaker has removed fungi from the plant kingdom and made it a separate kingdom so our understanding about the plant kingdom kept changing from time to time earlier if we take monera was under plant kingdom protista was also under plant kingdom fungi was also under plant kingdom see when protista got separated it became three kingdom classification when monera got separated it became four kingdom classification when fungi got separated it became five kingdom classification and if you take cyanobacteria cyanobacteria were called as blue green algae they kept cyanobacteria under algae which comes under plant kingdom but now cyanobacteria is no more under algae cyanobacteria is under bacterial kingdom monera okay so now plant kingdom is divided into five groups what are the five groups of plant kingdom algae bryophyta pteridophyta gymnospermae angiospermae so the five groups of plant kingdom are one is called as algae and second one bryophytes third one we can tell pteridophytes and fourth one is gymnosperms and the fifth one is angiosperms so these are the five groups of plant kingdom and when we talk about classifications so we can tell there was a earlier classification which is called artificial system of classification now what do you mean by artificial system of classification means they'll take only few characters into consideration that to morphological characters gross morphological characters what do you mean by morphological characters appearance right like they will take habit into consideration color into consideration number of leaves into consideration when they take only few gross morphological logical characters into consideration such a classification is called artificial system of classification so majorly which characters are they taking leaf they are taking right color of the leaf number of leaves they are taking means they are taking vegetative characters into consideration whereas linnaeus is a person who took andrician structure also into consideration majorly they will take vegetative characters for doing artificial system of classification linnaeus took andrician structure also to doing artificial system of classification now why did artificial system of classification failed why is it not in existence means since only few characters are considered for doing the classification closely related animals also closely related plants are also kept far away from each other because they did not take that characteristics which make them close to each other so the drawbacks are so they separated closely related organisms because the classification is done on few characteristics only and in artificial system of classification they have given equal weightage for vegetative character and the reproductive character it's not uh, correct right vegetative character keep changing with the environmental condition so reproductive character is stable it passes on to the next generation vegetative character keeps changing so if you take vegetative characters and if you give equal weightage that goes wrong so that's why artificial system of classification is not in use then comes natural system of classification the name itself is telling natural system of classification means natural affinities are taken into consideration for example you people have affinity for learning biology physics and chemistry will be boring and you will feel difficult to understand but biology you will enjoy and you will understand so that's what is called affinity attraction so in natural system of classification natural affinities of organisms natural attractions of organisms are taken into consideration that is a main point along with the natural affinity they have taken 
taken the internal structure also they have taken the external structure also into consideration so internal structure external structure internal structure is called anatomy external structure is called morphology and embryology they have taken phytochemistry biochemistry they have taken all these things if they are taken into consideration what are they cell structure they have taken morphology they have taken anatomy they have taken embryology they have taken and phytochemistry they have taken along with the natural affinities attractions among organisms then that becomes natural system of classification this is being used natural system of classification is being used so one example for natural system of classification was done by bentham and hooker bentham and hooker has categorized the flowering plants on the basis of natural system of classification only this natural system of classification is now also being followed for maintaining herbarial sheets so in the living world chapter they'll tell the herbarial sheets are arranged according to the standard system of classification according to which system of classification the herbarial sheets are arranged means which standard system they talk means natural system of classification only they are talking so artificial system we can give linear system which is not accepted it has so many drawbacks because only few characters are taken into consideration natural system where all characters along with the natural attractions also taken into consideration examples bentham and hooker system of classification which classification angiosperm classification flowering plant classification they have done now coming to the third system of classification which is called phylogenetic system of classification the third system is called phylogeny phylogeny means studying ancestral history in phylogenetic system of classification we are taking the ancestral history also into consideration so they believe that the organisms which are kept under one group have the same ancestor they'll be having similar characters because they originated from the same ancestor so along with the all these points ultra structure anatomy embryology and phytochemistry if you are even including the ancestral history also into consideration then that becomes phylogenetic system of classification which is widely followed system of classification this is not being followed this is being followed for herbarium maintenance this is widely being followed classification example for phylogenetic system of classification is engler and prantle system of classification the example for phylogenetic system of classification is engler and prantle system of classification sometimes we take the help of taxonomy also for doing classification like in ncrd textbook they have given what is numerical taxonomy what is cyto taxonomy what is chemo taxonomy we will see for doing classification sometimes this taxonomy also is used what is numerical taxonomy means computer will do the taxonomy here computer will do the classification here where we will feed codes to the computer a root means one stem means two leaf means three flower means four like that we give uh, numbers to the a uh, computer and will run a program so since it is a computer it's a machine it can read as many characters as possible so it's not reading few characters like artificial system it's may reading many characters so that is an advantage of natural uh, numerical taxonomy where computer will do so many characters are taken into consideration but in numerical taxonomy equal weightage is given for vegetative and reproductive characters equal weightage is given for 1 minute equal weightage is given for vegetative and reproductive characters okay now coming to the next one cytotaxonomy in cytotaxonomy cytological information is taken into consideration cell information is taken into consideration like chromosomal number structure and behavior is taken into consideration this has been asked in the neat previous paper what is cytotaxonomy cytotaxonomy is doing classification basing on the cytological information like a cell has how many chromosomes zooms what is the structure of the cell and what's the behavior of the cell if you do that is cytotaxonomy the last one is chemotaxonomy chemotaxonomy where we take chemical constituents into consideration chemical constituents of the cell what is the cell wall composition what is the cell membrane composition what is a nucleic acid composition all that when we talk that comes under chemotaxonomy take a screenshot we'll continue with plant kingdom now we will try to see the flow chart of plant kingdom so how can we divide them into different groups that we will see so we told that plants are divided into five groups algae bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms algae are the primitive plants they are completely aquatic plants gymnosperms and angiosperms are higher order plants and they are advanced plants the plants which we can see around are gymno and angiosperms 
Now let us see the classification of the plant kingdom. Now the algal body is thallus like and there is no embryo formation in the algal classification okay so if we have to divide the plant kingdom we are going to divide it into two first one are non embryophytes and the next one are embryophytes what do you mean by non embryophytes they don't have embryo so then they are algae so in non embryophytes we will keep the first group of plants what are they higher algae they are kept under non embryophytes again if you see algae are divided into three groups green algae brown algae red algae so this algae is divided into three classes the first class is called green algae next one is called brown algae and the third one is called red algae so coming to embryophytes where embryo is seen in its life cycle then embryophytes are further classified into the plants which are having tracheids and vessels the plants which don't have the vascular bundles if the plants are not having vascular bundles then they are called atracheophytes if they are not having vascular bundles they are called atracheophytes and if they have vascular bundles they are called tracheophytes so tracheophytes means vascular bundles are present vascular bundles are present now atracheophytes under atracheophytes bryophytes will come so they are the first land plants but they don't possess vascular tissue so under atracheophytes bryophytes will come now again bryophytes are divided into three classes what are the three classes of bryophytes means the one which is in the liver uh, lobe like they are called hepatic opsida and the one which are horn like is called anthoceropsida and hepatic opsida anthoceropsida and the third one will be called as mosses bryopsida so these are the three classes of bryophytes right so we have divided embryophytes into the ones which are not having vessels which are called atracheophytes under that example is bryophytes and the ones which have vessels are called tracheophytes now these tracheophytes are divided into two groups again these tracheophytes are divided into two groups again what are the uh, two groups of uh, tracheophytes we can divide them yeah we can divide them into three groups the first one is called pteridophytes next one is called gymnosperms and next one is called angiosperms now pteridophytes are the first plants to possess vascular tissue they are the first plants to possess vascular tissue and in ncert they have given that pteridophytes have four classes again what are the four classes of pteridophytes first one second class third class and fourth class they are called lycopsida psilopsida spinopsida pteropsida these are the four classes of pteridophytes we will see when we go to pteridophytes in detail coming to gymnosperms gymnosperms means gymna means naked sperma means seed naked seeded plants they are gymnosperms are divided into three classes what are the three classes of gymnosperms first one is called as cycadopsida second one is called gnetopsida and the third one is called coniferopsida these are the three groups of gymnosperms angiosperms are divided into two classes called monocotyledonate dicotyledonate if the seeds are having two cotyledons dicotyledonate if the seed is having one cotyledon monocotyledonate so angiosperms are divided into two the one which is having two cotyledons is called mono cotyledonate and one which is having two seeds is called di 
cotyledonae so this is a broad classification of plant kingdom we have divided them into non embryophytes and embryophytes under non embryophytes algae will come algae has three classes red algae brown algae green algae embryophytes which have embryo uh, in again we have divided them the embryophytes which are not having vascular bundles are called bryophytes bryophytes are divided into three classes hepaticopsida anthocyropsida and bryopsida tracheophytes are divided into three groups pteridops pteridophytes gymnosperms angiosperms now pteridophytes are having four classes psilopsida lycopsida spinopsida pteropsida gymnosperms are having three classes cycadopsida gnetopsida coniferopsida angiosperms are having two classes monocotyledonae dicotyledonae all this we are going to read in this chapter take a screenshot then we will come to the first group which is called as algae right now let's go start the chapter with the first group of plants primitive group of plants completely aquatic plants that is algae do you know who coined the term algae linnaeus coined the term algae and you know what's the meaning of algae the latin meaning of algae means seaweed and you know what is uh, study of algae called phycology so we starting with the first one what is that algae the word algae was coined by we are discussing it's coined by linnaeus and what is the latin meaning of alga the latin meaning of alga sea weed they are present in the sea as weeds so that's why they are called they are commonly called as sea weeds and uh, what is the study of algae called the study of algae is called algology or phycology the study of algae is called algology or phycology and who is father of phycology fritch is father of phycology who is father of indian phycology mop iyengar is father of indian phycology fritch is considered as father of phycology whereas m o p iyengar is considered as father of indian phycology now coming to the characteristics taxonomic characteristics just now we saw algae are non embryophytic they don't have embryo they are non embryophytic and they are atracheophytic they don't have vascular tissues also they are atracheophytic the body is as simple and it is thallus like and they are autotrophic they are plants right so they are autotrophic and they are mostly aquatic algae are mostly aquatic they can be seen in fresh water also they can be seen in marine water also so these are the general characteristics of algae the word algae was coined by linnaeus the latin meaning of alga means seed seaweed the study of algae is called algology or phycology father of phycology is fritch and mop iyengar is father of indian phycology the taxonomical characteristics is they don't have embryo so they are non embryophytic they don't have tracheids also vessels also they are atracheophytic the body is very simple because they are primitive plants and the body is thallus like means undifferentiated and they are autotrophic since they are plants and they are mostly aquatic they occur in fresh water also they occur in marine water also now they are autotrophic means they are chlorophyll bearing also in ncrt they have given for autotrophic they have given chlorophyll bearing plants now where are they found they are mostly found in aquatic uh, regions some algae even found in moist soil they are found in moist soil they are found on moist stone they are found on wood also we can write this point also some algae are also seen where can we see them on moist stone soil also we can see them 
and on wood also we see them not only in water we can see some algae on moist stone soil and wood and some algae will make associations some algae form associations like if algae is making association with fungi then such an association is called lichens such an association is called lichens lichens are pollution indicators and one more algae will be there on the fur of sloth bear now this bear almost its life cycle com it completely in on the life like it will be hanging on the tree now because it is on the tree moisture will be there so like algae will be there on its body on its fur so some algae will be there on the fur of the sloth bear they have given in ncrt some algae will make association symbiotic associations of algae with fungi is called lichen associations take a screenshot we will continue coming to the form and sizes the form and size of algae is variable means they are in different forms they are in different shapes let's see the form takes para in ncrt they're talking about the form and the size of algae are highly variable means they keep changing they are in different for example if you take we can find unicellular algae we can find unicellular microscopic that too motile algae now example for this one unicellular microscopic motile algae we can take the example of chlamydomonas and if we have to take the example of unicellular microscopic non motile algae what shall we write if we have to write the example so all this is size and form only they are unicellular first point then they cannot be seen with the naked eye they are microscopic but they are non motile here if we have to take the example of non motile algae chlorella is an example okay so if they are microscopic and if they are unicellular motile is chlamydomonas if it is non motile it is chlorella and if you have to take the example of multicellular colonial and motile volvox is an example multicellular colonial colony they live and they are motile also now the example of multicellular colonial motile algae will be volvox whereas next one we are going to write is hydrodictin hydrodictin is an example of multicellular colonial non motile algae hydrodictin is example of multicellular colony only so colonial non motile algae example we already wrote it is called as hydrodictin now if we talk about filamentous algae filament is branched or unbranched let us talk about unbranched filamentous unbranched floating algae example spirogyra filamentous long filament like and it is unbranched spirogyra is not branched filamentous unbranched and it is not uh, it's not attached to the substratum it is free floating and non motile also now example for this one is spirogyra is also green algae now if we have to take the example of filamentous unbranched it is not floating here it is attached to the substratum what is an example see how many forms we are writing here that's why we told it is highly variable filamentous only unbranched only but it is not free floating it is attached to the substratum to the soil now what is a example here means eurothrix and oligonium are the examples green algae only 
this is also green algae only example now let's go to filamentous branched okay and attached filamentous and it is branched here branched and attached to the substratum it is filamentous it is branched the example here is cladophora what is the example here cladophora and some are very massive they grow meters and meters they are called as kelps if they are huge massive plant bodies if they are very huge and massive plant bodies then they are brown algae which are called as kelps they are called as kelps children this is about the size and form of algae so they can be microscopic or they can be very big they can form kelps also now the next one is when we talk about reproduction in algae algae shows all three methods of reproduction what are the three methods of reproduction means they go with vegetative reproduction they show asexual reproduction too they show sexual reproduction also they show that's what i told they will show all three methods of reproduction the first method is vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation if the body breaks into fragments each one can establish as its own so vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation of the body or in ncrt they told it is by formation of spores vegetative spores formation of some they did not mention the names they are just telling vegetative spores they are then coming to asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is also by spore formation only asexual reproduction is also by spore formation only take a screenshot we will continue right so i'll use the fresh board for writing asexual reproduction all this what we are seeing is the size and forms they are branch they are unbranched they are motile they are non motile they are unicellular they are multicellular they are massive all that we have seen with examples right now when we are talking about reproduction vegetative reproduction we told is by fragmentation then we are talking about asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is by various types of spores it's by various types of spores let us see there are so many types of spores but the common spore is zoospore which is a common type of asexual spore the common type of asexual spore is zoo spore zoo itself tells it's a motile spore it is motile unicellular spore zoo spore is motile unicellular spore and it's a common type of asexual spore now what are the other types of spores if zoo spore is the first type of spore second one we can add aplanospore now what is the difference from zoo spore to aplanospore means aplanospores are thin walled and they don't have motility structures they are thin walled non motile spores zoo spores are also thin walled but they are motile spores we wrote motile there aplanospores aplanospores are thin walled non motile spores and the third type of spore is called echinite it is called akinite the difference between aplanospore to akinite this is thin wall but here it is thick wall non motile is same here also these are also non motile only and thick walled non motile spore formed from vegetative cell from where it is formed formed from not from reproductive cell from from vegetative cell only to tide over unfavorable conditions then that is called as akinite now fourth one is called palmilla stage 
Next one is called palmilla stage. In palmilla stage, during unfavorable conditions, let it be zoospore or aplanospore, they are surrounded by thick mucilaginous conditions. So, so many spores together, if they are coated by mucilaginous condition, that stage is called as palmilla stage. In palmilla stage, so either zoospores or aplanospores are surrounded by they are surrounded by mucilaginous coat then they are called as palmilla stage children this is about asexual reproduction now talking about sexual reproduction then in sexual reproduction also algae exhibits all three types of sexual reproduction what are the three types the first one is isogamy the second one is an isogamy and the third one is oogamy the three types of sexual reproduction are isogamy and isogamy and oogamy the name itself tells gamy means gametes are there so you cannot distinguish between the male gamete and female gamete morphologically and functionally physiologically you cannot distinguish them they mean the same that is isogamy isogamy means if morphologically and physiologically if morphologically and physiologically if the gametes are same if gametes are same then we call it as isogamy then we call it as isogamy now in isogamy if we have to see the examples of isogamous motile gametes what is the example and if we have to see isogamous non motile gametes what is the example see non motile spirogyra goes and motile elothrix will go so here both male and female gametes both are motile both are same in size then isogamous with motile gametes so here both male and female appear the same but they don't have motility structures then spirogyr is an example this is isogamy in an isogamy what happens in an isogamy they are morphologically different they are morphologically different see they are morphologically different one is small the other one is big so morphologically one is small the other one is big but both of them either they will have motility structures or both of them will not have motility structures that is an isogamy if two points are same morphology and physiology same isogamy if two points are different oogamy only one point is different an isogamy morphology is different but both are motile example is eudorina example for an isogamy is Eudorina. This is also green algae. This is also green algae. Eulothrix is also green algae. Coming to Oogamy. In Oogamy, morphology is also different. Physiology is also different. So, both are different. Morphology is also different. Physiology is also different. Male gamete is small. Female gamete is big. Male gamete is motile. Female gamete is non-motile. So, this is called Oogamy. Examples for Oogamy are Volvox is one example. Fucus is one example. This point they have asked in the NEET examination. So, on the board, we have seen the types of reproduction. Vestatory reproduction is by fragmentation. Asexual reproduction is by various types of spores. The common type of spore is zoospore, which is a motile spore, which is a thin wall spore. Second one, aplanospore, thin wall, non motile spore. Third one, echinids, thick walled rusting spore formed by the vegetative cell. Fourth one, palmilla stage, where many spores are surrounded by mucilation, is coat to tide over unfavorable conditions. Coming to sexual reproduction, it can be by isogamy, and isogamy, and oogamy. Take a screenshot. Now coming to the uses of algae, let us see where are algae used. Algae we told they are primitive plants, they are aquatic plants, that means they do photosynthesis. That means they are making the food. Half of the total carbon dioxide fixation on the earth is done by algae, that's the first economic importance. What is that? So half of the total carbon dioxide fixation, they fix carbon dioxide into carbohydrate, glucose, is done by algae, first point. By doing photosynthesis, will they release oxygen? Yes, they will release oxygen 
so where are they present they are present in the aquatic body right so means where will they release the oxygen they will release the oxygen into the aquatic environment where other aquatic animals will take the dissolved oxygen and they will survive second point and the third point they are primary producers of energy rich compounds in the aquatic food chain in aquatic food chain you will start with phytoplanktons which are free floating algae are the components of the aquatic food chain they are the producers from which animals will take and they get their energy that's the third point and many species of marine algae are edible many species of marine algae are edible 70 species are edible three examples they have given one is porphyra second one is lamnaria third one is sargasm among the many marine edible algae porphyra lamnaria sargasm are among the 70 marine edible algae how will you remember you can remember my name is Prasanna Lakshmi my initial starts with S so like that we have to remember one algae with P one algae with L one algae with S so Porphyra, laminaria, sargasm. That's the fourth economic importance. Next one. Certain brown algae and red algae. From the cell walls of brown algae and red algae, we extract hydrocolloids. What are hydrocolloids? They hold the water and they will not allow the specimen to become dry. So the hydrocolloid extracted from brown algae is algin. The hydrocolloid extracted from red algae is keragenin. This point appeared in NEET 2021 entrance examination. Algin is a product of red algae or brown algae it is a product of brown algae keragenin which is hydrocolloid is a product of red algae so this is a fifth economic importance next one agar agar which is obtained from the cell walls of the red algae acts as solidifying agent it is used in solidifying ice creams jams and jellies it's also used as a component in nutrient agar medium for culturing bacteria the last point chlorella and spirulina they are unicellular filamentous algae and they are rich sources of proteins they act as scp single cell proteins and they are even used as food supplements by space travelers so we have seen seven once again let us see the economic importances or use of algae algae are the primitive plants they do photosynthesis by doing photosynthesis they will fix carbon dioxide how much amount of carbon dioxide do they fix half of the total carbon dioxide fixation is by algae alone the remaining half will be done by bryophyte pteridophyte gymnosperms and angiosperms by doing photosynthesis they release oxygen into the water using that dissolved oxygen aquatic animals will survive second point third point is they act as primary producers in the aquatic food chain and they make energy rich compounds fourth point among the 70 marine edible algae porphyra laminaria sargasm are edible they are eatable next point certain brown algae red algal cell walls we extract hydrocolloids hydrocolloid means they hold water and they prevent dehydration of the specimen algin from brown keragenin from red algae next point agar is a solidifying agent to any liquid if you add agar it settles so it is used in ice cream settlement it is used in charms and jellies it is used for preparing nutrient agar medium for the culture of the bacteria last point is chlorella and spirulina are unicellular algae and they are rich sources of protein so they are used as scp single cell protein and they are even used as food supplements by space travelers in 2020 from here they asked the question so 2021 from here they ask the question right so this has been asked in need 2021 so 2022 they can pick the other point be careful easy so just understand the way as it is okay now algae are divided into three classes basing on the pigments they are having so they are divided into if the pigment is green green algae if they are brown in appearance brown algae if they are red in appearance red algae green algae are called chlorophyceae brown algae are called pheophyceae red algae are called rhodophyceae so here i have written the characteristics of green algae we will see and then we will talk about brown and red also Green algae means they are chlorophyceae. It's a class of algae. C E A E suffix comes at the last means it is a class. Chloro means green. Green algae. So that means chlorophyceae are commonly called green algae. They are mostly aquatic. Freshwater forms are more here. And they can be unicellular, they can be colonial, they can be filamentous. In the introduction part of algae, what in all examples we have seen are all with green algae only. And 
they have which chlorophyll pigments chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b are the main pigments because of the presence of chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b they are in green color they are grass green in color so the grass green color is due to the abundance predominance of a pigment called chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b where are the pigments present pigments are present in a chloroplast now what is chloroplast chloroplast is an organelle the basic shape of the chloroplast in plant is it is oval shaped but in algae the chloroplasts are of different shapes cup shaped chloroplast is there disc shaped chloroplast is there collar shaped girdle shaped chloroplast is there star shaped chloroplast is there network reticulate chloroplast is there let us see the examples okay so the pigments are stored in chloroplast the chloroplasts are in different shapes cup shaped chloroplast is found in chlamydomonas and volvox disc shaped in collarpa girdle shaped collar shaped in eulothrix reticulate network shape in oodigonium and hydrodictin star shaped zygnema and ribbon shaped in spirogyra these are the shapes of the chloroplast now what do they store what is the reserve food material of green algae it is simple starch where is the simple starch stored in special protein in special structures called pyrenoids where are pyrenoids present inside the chloroplast how many pyrenoids are present one too many pyrenoids are present so again what do they store they store simple starch where do they store in a special structure called pyrenoids where are pyrenoids present in the chloroplast how many pyrenoids are present per chloroplast one too many pyrenoids are present per chloroplast actually the protein will be inside and carbohydrate starch coating will be outside actually we think starch will be inside and protein membrane like outside but it is opposite here protein is inside covered by a starchy coating called pyrenoid which is a characteristic feature of green algae only in brown and red we don't have that okay now apart from pyrenoids they also some green algae also store oil droplets now the cell wall when we see since they are in water aquatic water marine water they have two walls so this outer wall the outer wall of green algae is made up of pectin which holds the water inner wall is made up of cellulose inner wall is made up of cellulose and the outer wall of green algae is made up of pectin then vegetative reproduction fragmentation asexual reproduction is by zoospores in zoospores where are the flagella present in zoospores we tell two apical flagella equal flagella two flagella will be there from apical position they are arising equal they are arising now sexual reproduction is by isogamy also and isogamy also oogamy also eulothrix pyrogyra isogamy eudorina and isogamy volvox oogamy are the examples so see how fast we have seen the characteristics of green algae now coming to the examples of green algae in ncrt they have given some examples we will remember the examples by making some sentences the sentence here for remembering green algae is us has very clean in climate us has very clean climate is a sentence which i have made u stands for eulothrix s stands for spirogyra has um, h stands for us has h stands for one minute H nothing. V stands for volvox. C stands for chara. Another C stands for chlamydomonas. Come on, tell me. Here we just in order to make a sentence, we took has, but has is not coding for anything. U for eulothrix. S for spirogyra. V for volvox. C for chara. C for chlamydomonas. So these are the examples for green algae. Take a screenshot. We'll continue. Yeah, now we'll talk about brown algae and red algae also. Green algae are mostly freshwater forms. The reserve food material is simple starch. Flagella, two flagella, apical flagella, equal flagella. And the predominant pigment, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And where does where does they store the starch in a special structures called pyrenoids? Yes, now come on, let's talk about pheophysia. Pheophysia, they're commonly called brown algae. They are commonly called brown algae. 
I kept green algae so that we can compare that and we can write it down. So they are commonly called brown algae and they are mostly fresh water. These are mostly marine water. They are brown algae and they are mostly marine water forms. Out of the three classes, brown algae is the large group. Many members are in the brown algae only. So brown algae forms large group of algae. This is the largest group among the classes. And brown algae size and shapes, they vary. So for example, laminaria, if you take, it grows till 9 meters. Another macrocystis, if you take, it grows till 100 meters, which is called as giant kelp. So we can tell the size and forms are variable. For example, if we go with laminaria, We go with laminaria. Laminaria reaches a height up to, it reaches a height up to 2 to 9 meters. And if we take an example of macrocystis, macrocystis grows up to 20 to 100 meters height. So that's why macrocystis is called as giant kelps. It's called as giant kelps and they are grass green in color. These are brown in color. What is the main pigment? They have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll C. Chlorophyll A, B they have. They have chlorophyll A and C as a major pigment. As a major pigment and they have carotenoids and xanthophylls. as axillary pigments because of the they what is the color they range from yellow color green color to different shades of brown in which color brown algae appear so they appear from green to various shades of brown from green to various shades of brown they appear due to the concentration of xanthophyll. Xanthophyll is brown color, right? If the xanthophyll is more, it will be dark brown. If the xanthophyll is less, it will be light brown. And here you told the reserve food material is simple starch. In brown algae, the reserve food material is complex starch. The reserve food material is complex starch. What is it called? Laminarian starch. The reserve food material is complex starch which is called laminarian starch or mannitol. Reserve food material is complex starch which is called laminarian starch or mannitol. And the cell wall if you see, the outer wall is what is made of and inner wall what is there. In outer wall pectin is there, here alginin will be there. Inner wall cellulose, here also cellulose. They are also cellulose and here also cellulose. Now brown algae since they are very massive, inner to cell wall it has protoplast. Now what is protoplast made of? We talked about cell wall, let us talk about protoplast also. Now we are telling here the protoplast contains plastids. The plastids contain chlorophyll A, chlorophyll C, keratin and xanthophylls. The protoplast in addition to plastids, in addition to the plastids where pigments are there, it contains large vacuole. It contains a large central vacuole and nucleus. So the, the protoplast contains a big vacuole also, nucleus also. Now coming to the body, they have structure through which it is attached to the substratum is called hold fast. It has a stem like structure called stipe. It has a leaf like photosynthetic organ called frond. They are very massive. They grow like kelps. What is the structure which helps in attachment? The attachment structure is called uh, uh, hold fast. The attachment structure is called hold fast. The stem like structure, the stalk is called stipe. And the leaf like photosynthetic organ, children it is called frond. The leaf like photosynthetic organ is called as frond. Talking about reproduction, vegetative reproduction, common fragmentation. Asexual reproduction is by zoospores. But in brown algae, the zoospores are having lateral flagella 
unequal flagella. Here we showed apical flagella, equal flagella. Here I am showing lateral flagella and unequal flagella. This is one difference. And the shape of the gametes are pear shaped, pyriform shaped, and they are biflagellated. They are biflagellated. Sexual spores are also pear shaped, biflagellated. Sexual spores are also, sexual gametes are also pear shaped and biflagellated. Now, talking about the examples of brown algae, if we have to talk the examples of brown algae, for green algae, we made a code. No, US has very clean climate. Now, what's the code for brown algae? The code for brown algae is self defense. What's the code? I'm writing it here. Self defense is a code for brown algae in that s stands for sargasm e stands for ectocarpus l stands for laminaria f stands for fucus d stands for dictyota so the code for green algae examples is us has very clean colleges so eulothrix spirogyra we can take and then volvox chara and chlamydomonas here the code is self defense s for sargasm ectocarpus laminaria fucus and dictyota you need to pronounce with me so that you will become familiar to that and you can remember it easily so take a screenshot then we will talk about red algae yeah i'll write down here red algae are called rhodophysiae brown algae are called pheophysiae red algae will be called rhodophysiae green algae is a primitive class of algae red algae is an advanced class of algae green algae are mostly fresh water red algae are mostly marine water and the speciality of red algae is they are seen where light intensity is more also near to the shores they are seen where light intensity is very less deep inside the oceans also red algae will survive so now we are talking about rhodophysia commonly called red algae So these points will help us to write parallel points here. So they are commonly called red algae. They are mostly marine forms. Here also they are mostly marine forms only. Now they are red due to due to the presence of they are red due to the presence of R phycoerythrin. They are red due to the presence of R phycoerythrin. Along with the R phycoerythrin, they have chlorophyll pigments also, but A and D, A B green algae, A C brown algae, A D red algae. So they have R phycoerythrin and chlorophyll A and chlorophyll D. They have. Okay. Now here. Yeah, we wrote the pigments. They appear red color because of the presence of R phycoerythrin, we can tell. And we are telling they occur in the regions where light intensity is more near to the shore also. They occur in the regions where light intensity is poor also deep inside the oceans also. So they occur in places where light intensity is high where it is near the shores and also in places where light intensity is low means deep inside the ocean also they will grow Red algae will grow at the shores also. Red algae will go deep inside the oceans also. Since they are coming at advanced class, some class of red algae will have higher complex body organization. They have complex body organization. Some red algae have complex body organization. Why? Because it is a advanced class of algae they have complex body organization and here the reserve food material is laminarian starch they are the reserve food materials floridian starch and laminarian starch or mannitol here let us write down the reserve food material 
the reserve food material is floridian starch and this floridian starch resembles which component in its structure it resembles amylopectin component of starch it has the same structure glycogen structure also it will resemble the floridian starch which is a reserve food material of red algae will resemble glycogen structure will also resemble amylopectin structure then the cell wall what is outer and what is inner the cell wall of red algae outside what is there inside what is there so outside it contains pectose and polysulfate esters it contains pectose and polysulfate esters agar is an example of polysulfate ester inner as usual cellulose only in green algae brown algae red algae inner wall is cellulose only in green algae outer one is pectose in brown algae outer one is algin in red algae outer one is pectose also with polysulfate ester which is called as agar now here when we talk about uh, vegetative reproduction fragmentation asexual reproduction by spores so the vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation and asexual reproduction by spores sexual reproduction by gametes now the peculiarity here is the spores and gametes both are non motile they don't have any flagellas green algae two flagella equal flagella apical flagella brown algae two flagella unequal flagella lateral flagella red algae no flagella no flagella in the asexual spore also no flagella in the sexual gamete also so non motile no flagella gametes are also non motile now we have to take the examples of red algae the code which i have made here is there is a cartoon channel called pogo in that channel there is one program called as gali gali sim sim so we can make a code uh, basing on this sentence like pogo par gali gali sim sim dekho so we can make pogo par gali gali sim sim dekho is the code P stands for porphyria. P stands for polysiphonia. G stands for gelidium. Another G stands for gracilaria. Okay. So porphyria, polysiphonia, uh, gelidium, gracilaria. These are the examples. These are the examples what they have given in NCERT. That's it. So if we have to write on more examples, new examples, Condrus is one more example. Batrachospermum. Batracho. spermum is an another example of brown red algae right children red algae they appear red because of the presence of r phyco erythrin they are mostly marine forms along with r phyco erythrin what chlorophyll they have a and d they have now light intensity is very light intensity and no light intensity is also they will grow and they have complex body organization because it is an advanced class reserve food material floridian starch which resembles amylopectin also and glycogenated structure and the cell wall outer agar agar will be there means polysulfate esters will be there inner cellulose will be there vestibular reproduction fragmentation asexual reproduction by non motile spore sexual reproduction by non motile gametes and they say they show complex post fertilization development came in neat 2018 paper so which algae will show complex post fertilization development means red algae so i'm where should i write here red algae shows complex post fertilization development came in neat 2018 examination examples we made a code like pogo par gali gali sim sim dekho porphyria polysiphonia gelidium gracilaria new examples if you want to add from your side add chondrus and batrachospermum with this we finished algae so take a screenshot we will move to bryophytes Now let us talk about bryophytes. We finished the first group of plants, primitive plants called algae, the classes of algae. Now the second group of plants are bryophytes. Who coined the term bryophyte? Braun is a scientist who coined the term bryophyte. Why did he coin? What is the meaning of bryo? Bryo means moss. 
Phyta means plant. So, brown coined the term bryophyte. Bryo means moss. Phyta means plant. And bryophytes, they come under which category of plants? They are the first type of plants which have embryo because algae are non-embryophytic. So, that's why we can call them as primitive embryophytic. And they don't have tracheids, vessels, xylem, phloem. That means they are atracheophytes. And they have the female sex organ called archegonium. That's why they are called archegonate. And they are cryptogams. They are not phanerogams. So, they have hidden reproductive parts. That means they are cryptogams. So, what words are we using for bryophytes? We are calling they are the first embryophytes. But they don't possess vascular tissue. Means they are atracheophytes. And they have the female sex organ archegonium. So, archegonate. And they have hidden reproductive parts. Means they are cryptogams. So, we can tell algae are completely water plants. That means bryophytes are the first land plants. They are the first land plants without having vascular tissue. Since they came first time on the land, so they need water. When do they need water? For the development of the plant body, for the development of the gametophyte, they need water. And for sexual reproduction, fertilization also, they need water. So they are dependent on water for fertilization and for the development of the gametophyte that I wrote it here. Since they need water, we can call bryophytes as amphibians of plant kingdom. We can call bryophytes as amphibians of plant kingdom because they need water. And they exhibit which type of life cycle? Algae exhibits haplontic life cycle at the end of the chapter we have detailed explanation about life cycles there we will see just you remember here that algae exhibits haplontic life cycle bryophytes and pteridophytes exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle means haplontic stage is also there haploid gametophytic stage is also there equally diploid sporophytic stage is also there that's why we are writing haplodiplontic life cycle then when we see the uh, bryophyte plant body which is parenchymatous plant body you cannot differentiate into root, stem and leaf. Means we can tell here, bryophytes don't have true roots, true stems and true leaves. They don't have true roots. Instead, they have root-like structures called rhizoids. They don't have true stems, but they have stem-like structures called colloids. They don't have true leaves, but they have leaf-like structures called phylloids. The plant body of algae is haploid and it is called as gametophyte. The plant body which can make gamete is called gametophyte and gametophyte stage represents N haploid stage since it is a plant body it is green since it is green it is photosynthetic since it is can manufacturing its own food by photosynthesis it is independent it's not dependent on anything that's what I wrote here they exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle the plant body is parenchymatous the plant body is represented as a haploid stage it's called gametophyte it is green it is photosynthetic since it is photosynthetic it is independent and the plant body is simple it is is like it can be prostrate crawling also or it can be erect also it is attached to the substratum if this is substratum the plant body is attached to the substratum how it is attached to the substratum means by rhizoids by root like structures called rhizoids the rhizoids can be branched or unbranched they can be unicellular or multicellular that's what is given in NCRT the plant body is simple yes it is simple and it appears thallus like the plant body is simple but it is little differentiated than algae algal plant body is even very simple so when compared to algal plant body this is better only but still since it is not having true roots true stems true leaves we can tell it is simple only and the body can be crawling also the body can be erect also the body is attached to the substratum through root like structures called rhizoids the rhizoids can be branched or unbranched the rhizoids can be unicellular or multicellular then they lack true roots this i already told you they don't have true roots true stems true leaves instead they have root like structures called rhizoids stem like structures called colloids leaf like structures called phylloids right and the sex organs on the gametophyte itself they will have sex organs the sex organs are jacketed they are multicellular and they are stalked so they are not naked they are jacketed and they have a stalk to hold they are stalked and they are multicellular they are multicellular so take a screenshot then we will talk about that side Yes, so I can erase this part so we can use this while explanation. So we are talking about bryophytes. 
so we told the sex organs are stalked they are multicellular and they are jacketed the male sex organ is called antherium the female sex organ is called archegonium antherium will be club shaped archegonium will be flask shaped so the male sex organ what is the male sex organ called the male sex organ is called antherium and how does antherium appears like a club shaped structure what is the female sex organ the symbol we use for female no the female sex organ is called archegonium and what is the shape of the archegonium it is flask shaped archegonium is a flask shaped structure and then we told it is stalked see i have shown you one one stalk here it is stalked and it is made up of many cells so it is multicellular and it is jacketed so all these are the cells this is a flask shaped archegonium and this is the stalk of the antherium it is multicellular stalk it has and this is also jacketed this is also jacketed and it is club shaped structure so that's what we wrote the male sex organ is antherium the antherium produces anthrozoids the antherium it produces the male gametes what are the male gametes called the male gametes are called anthrozoids and these anthrozoids are motile how are they motile they possess flagella so the anthrozoids which are male gametes they are motile they possess flagella since we told for fertilization they need water in the water they swim and they reach here now let us talk about the female sex organ so it is swimming and it is reaching here through the water as a medium through the water as a medium the male gametes are swimming and they are reaching here what is this portion of the female sex organ called neck this is called neck and this sw swollen portion is called venter and this is stalk this is stalk it has stalk venter and neck the neck contains what is these cells called these cells are called neck cover cells they are called neck cover cells and inside the neck cover cells they have neck canal cells so 6 to 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 to 8 neck canal cells will be there they are covered by neck cover cells coming to the venter venter also contains one venter canal cell and one big egg cell so here is a venter canal cell and this is a egg this is a venter canal cell and this is the egg again the female sex organ is archegonium it is flask shaped it is jacketed multicellular and it has narrow neck the neck is having neck cover cells at the edges and at the center narrow canal neck canal cells will be there the swollen part is called venter venter has one venter canal cell and one big large egg cell and this is the stalk now these at maturity the neck canal cells and the venter canal cells will degenerate at maturity these neck canal cells and the venter canal cells will degenerate and they secrete malic acid so now the male gamete attracted towards the malic acid it goes inside so at the maturity i'm telling they will break out and the secret malic acid now attracted towards malic acid the male gamete will go inside so the male gametes the male gametes are moving towards the female gamete egg how are they moving towards egg they are moving towards the egg by with the help of chemicals so means it is chemotactic movement movement towards chemical is called chemotactic movement and the male gamete will fuse with the female gamete inside so internal fertilization bryophytes will have internal fertilization now fertilization leads to development of zygote so fertilization leads to development of zygote this becomes twin zygote so when once the zygote comes when once the twin stage comes it's no longer a haploid stage then it becomes a diploid stage it's no longer a gametophyte stage then then it becomes sporophyte stage understood children so let us see what we have written on the board then we will continue so 
the male sex organ is antheridium here is an antheridium the antheridium produces biflagellated anthrozoids by mitotic division so the plant body is n so by mitotic division only the antheridium will produce anthrozoids which are motile which have two flagella the female sex organ is called archegonium here is archegonium it is flask shaped it has a long neck here is a long neck it has a swollen venter the neck contains neck cover cells and neck canal cells the venter contains venter canal cell and venter excel at maturity the neck canal cells and venter canal cells will degenerate and they secrete malic acid chemicals to attract the male gametes towards the female gamete this movement of the male gamete towards the female gamete by getting attracted to chemicals is called chemotactic movement so fertilization happens inside the female reproductive organ called archegonium if the fertilization is inside it is called internal fertilization fertilization lead to development of zygote zygote is 2n so now this zygote represents a sporophytic generation till now it is gametophyte when once 2n came it is called sporophyte now this zygote which is sporophyte undergoes mitotic divisions it will undergo mitotic divisions and it transforms into an embryo the zygote will undergo mitotic divisions and it will transfer into an embryo that is why we are calling bryophytes as embryophytes now this embryo is differentiated into foot seta and capsule if you have to see the picture we'll take the example of funaria which is called moss marcantia funaria sphagnum are the examples now if we take the example of funaria in funaria this is multicellular branch rhizoids these are then this is colloid on the colloid leafy like members leafy members will be there there will be whorled and it has branch and the side branch usually it will be male branch and so i can write it as male branch and the straight branch will be female branch i am drawing funaria now this is a male branch the male branch has antheridia the antheridia will produce biflagellated anthrozoids and this is a female one where archegonium will be there this is a venter and this is the neck so it came inside it fused zygote is formed zygote developed into embryo so when zygote comes when embryo comes then you are telling it is 2n so till here root stem and leaf like structures are gametophyte till here the plant body is gametophyte till here the plant body is gametophyte now what happens to the embryo we will see now this embryo is differentiated into foot seta and capsule the embryo is differentiated into foot seta and capsule so this embryo will make a foot like structure it will make a long slender seta like structure and it has a swollen capsule like structure so foot seta capsule these three represents the sporophytic stage they represents the sporophytic stage developed from the embryo it is 2n now foot is for anchorage it is anchoring right and seta is for conduction when it's taking food and nutrients it helps in conduction now this is capsule this is capsule capsule contains spore mother cells the capsule contains so many spore mother cells the spore mother cells will undergo meiotic division to make spores the spores are homosporous that means from one spore mother cell if you do meiosis then we get 1 2 3 4 all same spores homosporous bryophytes are homosporous the spore on germination it will make the plant body gametophyte the spore on germination will make the plant body gametophyte understood children so we draw funaria to understand what is gametophyte and what is sporophyte gametophyte is a plant body it is represented by root like rhizoids stem like colloids leaf like phylloids on that the reproductive parts are there male reproductive part antheridium female reproductive part oogonium the male gametes came and fused with the 
egg which is inside the venter fertilization zygote formation zygote developed into embryo embryo means 2n 2n means sporophyte the sporophyte is differentiated into foot seta capsule this is foot this is seta this is capsule that's what i wrote here so the zygote develops into the zygote undergoes mitotic divisions to form embryo it is sporophytic it is diploid the sporophyte is completely or partially dependent on gametophyte you can clearly see here the sporophyte is on gametophyte the sporophyte is on gametophyte so here in funaria which comes under bryopsida the sporophyte is partially dependent whereas in liverworts marcantia the sporophyte will be completely dependent so in one class it is completely dependent that is liverworts in other class mosses it is partially dependent so it can be either completely dependent or partially dependent the sporophyte is non green that's why i used red color it is non green it is not photosynthetic so then it needs food from the gametophyte fight okay the sporophyte is differentiated into three parts foot seta capsule foot is for anchorage support i'm standing on the floor it's for support seta is for conduction conduction of the food from here to here and the capsule contains mother cells spore mother cells the spore mother cell which is 2n should undergo meiotic division to make spores the spores are homosporous i think you understood take a screenshot then we will talk about the economic importance of bryophyte Though is little, three four points are there. We'll complete that, and then we'll go to the classification of bryophytes. Right. Now let us talk about the economic importance of bryophytes. The some of the bryophytes serve as food for herbaceous mammals. like herbaceous mammals birds also and other animals also some birds herbaceous mammals they feed on bryophytes that is one example or one economic importance we can tell now when we talk about zero cere zero cere means suction which happens on the rock first lichens will come and colonize on the rock they secret acids and they break the rock they make the soil then when the little soil comes then bryophytes are the organisms to come and colonize means they starting succession they starting succession succession means first standard you came to second standard sixth standard seventh standard tenth standard now we are in 11th standard 12th standard that is your succession so plants also first nothing is there dry area from their lichens came from from lichens mosses will come that is succession so let us write down economic importance under that under that we can talk about the first point that some bryophytes serve as food for herbaceous mammals grass eating mammals herbaceous mammals birds also and other animals this is one point right so next one if we see sphagnum is also example marcantia funaria sphagnum sphagnum is a moss if we take sphagnum sphagnum which is a moss when it dies it makes a peat dry thick structure so it has so many economic importance Sphagnum. In NCERT, we have the diagram. The fourth diagram. The first two are Marcantia. The third one is Funaria. The fourth diagram in NCERT is Sphagnum. Now, what is Sphagnum? Sphagnum when it dries, it makes. Uh, it is a moss basically. When it dries, it forms peat. Now, this peat has many economic importance. From this peat, we can extract fuel. From this, this peat can be used as a packaging material. So, since it can hold too much amount of water, we can use it as a packaging material to transport the living materials. So, the peat can be used to extract fuel. One point. Another one we can tell the peat can be used as packaging material. it is used as packaging material to transport living specimens since they hold the water living specimens need water to transport living specimens 
so this is economic importance about sphagnum then when we have to talk about the next economic importance i told you mosses along with lichens are the first organisms to colonize on the rock they secrete acids they dissolve the rock they make soil when soil is there other plants will come such a succession which is happening which is starting on a bare rock is called zero sere zirax succession so third point we can tell mosses along with lichens start succession zirax succession zirax means dry succession where do they start succession they start succession on rock how do they start so they secrete acids they make acids now this acid acts on the rock and it corrodes this corroded rock will make the soil this process called weathering they secrete acids by using acids they corrode the rock they break the rock and they make the soil when soil comes other plants will grow so this is the third economic importance means they starting zirax succession and fourth one we can tell mosses they form dense mats mosses they grow like a dense mats so these dense mat like structures they hold the water they hold the soil that means they can prevent soil erosion the fertile layer of the soil is a upper layer only so when rain water comes when floods comes that up, uh, upper layer washes off into the water body means the fertility of the soil is lost so they prevent soil erosion who prevents soil erosion mosses prevent soil erosion how are they preventing soil erosion by making dense mats they stick to the soil so the fourth point is mosses prevent soil erosion how can they prevent soil erosion by forming dense mat like structures they form dense mats which hold the soil which hold the soil children only four points as i told they have only little economic importance there are only four points under ncrt which they have mentioned about the important points about bryophytes now let's talk about classification have a screenshot in ncrt they have given that bryophytes are divided into two classes bryophytes are divided into two classes one class where the body of the bryophyte appears like the lobes of the liver so it is called hepatic opsida or commonly we call them as liver warts so bryophytes are divided into two classes what are the two classes the first class where the body appears like a lobes of the liver is called hepati copsida and the second advanced class is called bryopsida for hepati copsida the examples what we can take the best example is marcantia is one example porella is another example rixia is another example for bryopsida if you want example funeria and sphagnum are the examples Funeria and sphagnum are the examples. So we are telling here the hepatic opsida means the plant body resembles like the lobes of the liver. That is why hepatic, the plant body resembles like the lobes of liver. So that is why it is called hepatic opsida. Now when we see Uh, marcantia plant this way it is so this is like a liver lobe right so that's why it is called hepatic opsida now in this here we can draw the multicellular rhizoids root like structures called rhizoids and this is leaf like phylloid on this it has male reproductive and female reproductive parts the stalk which is attached is called if the anthridium is attached the stalk is called antheridiophore okay on the antheridiophore it shows antheridia so this is antheridia the male sex organ if we have to draw the female marcantia plant i'm drawing male and female separate means marcantia is dioecious or monoecious what do you think male and female are separate means it is dioecious so this is a female plant 
Now on the female plant, if we have to draw the female sex organ, the stalk of the female sex organ is called archegoniophore. And the female sex organ is called archegonium. This is archegonium. This is male sex organ. This is female sex organ. Since male and female are different, so we call it as dioecious. Marcantia is dioecious. If you take porella, it is monoecious. So here you can see clearly that the body is liver lobe-like. So that is why we call it as hepatic opsida. Now they are primitive class. Bryo bryopsida plants are advanced class. So they are primitive plants means how they grow, where do they grow? They grow in moist and shady places. So near the banks of the river, near the marshy areas, they grow. Now plant body, how is it? It is thallus-like. It is oppressive to the substratum. It is sticking to the substratum atom with the help of rhizoid like structures understood when we talk about asexual reproduction here the asexual reproduction the asexual reproduction in hepatic opsida is by fragmentation one method is fragmentation when the body splits into fragments they can establish themselves and there are special structures called gamma they are some asexual reproductive structures here this is called gamma what are gamma i am making them green they are green multicellular photosynthetic asexual buds what are gamma these are gamma here also I can draw because it is asexual reproduction. They are present on male also. They are present on female also. They are green, multicellular, photosynthetic. They are present on special structures called gamma cups. This is a cup. This is a cup. On the gamma cups, gamma are present. On the gamma cups, gamma are present. So asexual reproduction it can be either by fragmentation or by gamma. Coming to sexual reproduction. We already discussed about sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, we told like the male sex organ will produce anthridiums. The anthridia uh, produces biflagellated anthrozoids. The anthrozoids will come into the winter and they fuse with the egg cell. They'll form zygote. Zygote develops into foot seta capsule. Capsule contains spore mother cells. The spore mother cells undergo meiotic division to form haploid spores. The spore on germination will form the plant body directly. The spore on germination will form the plant body directly if we have to talk about sexual reproduction once again so this is a male sex organ the male sex organ will produces the male gamete this is the male gamete the male gamete is motile it swims in water it swims in water to reach the female sex organ inside the female sex organ it has a venter inside the venter it has egg it goes and fuses with the egg to make zygote zygote develops into embryo embryo will make foot embryo will make seta and embryo will make capsule the lid of the capsule is called operculum the lid of the capsule is called operculum. Inside the capsule, you have spore mother cells, which are 2N. The spore mother cells will undergo meiosis to make 1, 2, 3, 4. Same spores, homosporus came in neat examination. The spore mother cells undergo meiotic division inside the capsule to make homospores. These spores, when the operculum splits, when the operculum splits, splits the spores are released out the spores are released out and the spores on germination the spores on germination will form what do they form they form plant body they form plant body or they form gametophyte because spores are formed after meiotic division, it is N, haploid. When the haploid germinates, haploid stage, gametophytic stage will come. In bryophytes, in hepatic opsida, the spore on germination will form directly the gametophyte, directly the plant body, means this plant body will come. Whereas in bryophytes, the spore on germination will form a juvenile stage that we will talk. Now, what are the examples for, bryops, uh, for hepatic opsida? One is Marcantia, we have already seen. The other one is Porella, the other one is Rixia. If we have to see Porella, 
porella the porella will be like this it is a leafy member so it has leaf like structures arranged in two rows one row and this is the second row one row this is the second row one row this is the second row one row this is the second row and here it has capsule here it has capsule so this is a plant called porella there is a leafy member the leaves are arranged in two rows one row and the second row and your capsule is present marcantia children this is a picture of marcantia porilla i showed you here if you have to see the picture of rixia so rixia is a perfect thallus like plant it is a perfect thallus like plant so we can see here it is exactly liver lobe like and it is growing like a thallus only behind it we find the rhizoid like structures so all these are the examples of hepatic opsida take a screenshot then we'll talk about bryopsida also bryopsida means mosses hepatic opsida means liver warts now let's talk about bryopsida examples for bryopsida are funeria and sphagnum funeria diagram earlier also we have drawn gametophyte will be there on the gametophyte sporophyte is there right now let's talk about the second class which is called bryopsida bryopsida are commonly called mosses they are commonly called mosses now if we have to talk about the life cycle it contains gametophyte stage also and sporophyte stage also now since we are telling the life cycle is haplodiplontic gametophyte is haploid sporophyte is diploid now here the gametophyte means the haploid stage will come from the spore because the spore is haploid now the spore on germination what happens in uh, mosses the spore on germination forms it cannot directly form the gametophyte the spore on germination will form a protonema a juvenile stage it forms a juvenile stage what is the juvenile stage called protonema the spore on germination it is forming a juvenile stage young stage which is called as protonema this protonema is green it is crawling and it is photosynthetic so this is protonema the protonema it is filamentous it is green it's prostrate means it is crawling it is crawling now from the lateral bud of protonema if we see this is the spore the spore on germination formed the protonema from the lateral bud of the protonema secondary protonema will come from the lateral bud this is the lateral bud from the lateral bud the second thing is coming what is it called secondary protonema secondary protonema on the secondary protonema the adult will come this is juvenile which is crawling which is creeping which is prostrate so from the lateral but the adult gametophore will come and the gametophore is a leafy member if we know funeria has leaf like structures so it has reproductive organ also flask shape reproductive organ also so we tell that the haploid stage which is a gametophytic stage it comes from spore germination the spore on germination directly cannot give a plant body first it makes a juvenile stage that juvenile stage is crawling it is prostrate from the lateral bud of that adult will come which is called gametophore this is a adult this adult is called gametophore which bears the leaves which bears the reproductive organs so this is a gametophytic stage and we know the remaining part of the story now the male gametes will come fuse inside and then zygote will be formed embryo will be formed if embryo is formed it is sporophyte now the sporophyte contains foot seta capsule the capsule contains spore mother cells spore mother cells undergo meiotic division haploid spores all that we know so here we are telling that the gametophyte this is gametophyte 
after bryophytes the next one is pteridophytes we finished algae which are the first plants which are completely aquatic plants then we talked about bryophytes bryophytes are called amphibians of plant kingdom even though they are terrestrial plants they require water for the development of gametophyte and for fertilization now coming to pteridophytes so these are the first land plants to possess vascular tissue we can tell means they are having xylem and phloem so let us see what are the characteristics of pteridophytes and who is father of pteridophytes what is the meaning of pteron the meaning of algae is seaweed the meaning of bryophyte bryo means moss like plants dual mode plants they are terrestrial also fertilization happens in water the meaning of pteridophytes pteron means feather phyta means plants feather like leaf containing plants and heckel is the father of pteridology and coming to the characteristics of pteridophytes they are embryophytic embryo is there in their life cycle and they are tracheophytic they have vascular tissues xylem and phloem in fact we can tell they are first tracheophytic plants and then we can tell they are embryophytic they are tracheophytic and then they are archegonate they contain the female sex organ called archegonium they are non spermatophytes they don't form seeds that's why we used the word called non spermatophytes the reproductive parts are hidden it's not exposed like a flower they are hidden so then we are using a word called cryptogam so pteridophytes are embryophytic embryo is there in the life cycle you can see here this is a fern life cycle this is embryo since embryo is there children it is embryophytic since xylem and phloem tracheids and vessels are there oh, sorry tracheids are there we call it as tracheophyte since it has a female sex organ called archegonium archegonate since seeds are not there non spermatophytes since the reproductive parts are hidden cryptogams and the meaning of pteron means feather or fern we can tell phyta means plant means that feather like plants heckel is called as father of pteridology these are the first plants to possess vascular tissue bryophytes are the first land plants whereas pteridophytes are the first land plants to possess vascular tissue in animal kingdom we tell reptiles are the first land animals in the same manner so these are the first land plants so that's why one author has called them as botanical snakes they are also called botanical snakes they are also called vascular cryptogams they are having vascular tissue so that's why they are called vascular cryptogams and where do they grow they grow in moist cool dampy shady places so pteridophytes grow in cool dampy shady places so there are some aquatic pteridophytes also even though we tell they are terrestrial plants so there are some pteridophytes also so we can make a code called sam so we need we'll tell a plant with s a and m so s stands for salvinia a for azella m for marsilia salvinia azella and marsilia are examples of aquatic pteridophytes as bryophytes pteridophytes also will exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle but in bryophytes the plant body is gametophyte haploid whereas here in pteridophytes the plant body is sporophyte it is diploid okay so dominant stage in the life cycle is a plant body plant body i told it is sporophyte the sporophyte means it is the plant body means it is green it is photosynthetic if it is photosynthetic it need not depend means it is independent so they exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle but in bryophytes the plant body is haploid gametophyte in opposite in pteridophytes the plant body is diploid sporophyte since it is a plant body it is green it is photosynthetic and it is independent in bryophytes we told there are no true roots true stems and true leaves here we can tell there are true roots there are true stems and there are true leaves first time when root is coming can can we directly tell tap root will come no right so they have adventitious roots first time when stem is telling directly can we tell a big trunk woody trunk will be formed no right so the stem will be weak lean uh, it can be erect also it can be underground also when the leaves are coming for the first time we tell the leaf can be small leaf also the leaf can be big leaf also so i think you are able to understand so we are talking about sporophyte which is the dominant stage which is the plant body which is multicellular green photosynthetic and independent the sporophytic stage represents the plant body the plant body has true roots 
true stems and true leaves but the root system is adventitious root system the stems are weak stems aerial stem or underground stem erect stem or prostrate crawling stem the stem can show monopodial branching or dipodial branching monopodial branching means every side one branching every side one branching is monopodial branching dipodial branching means at every place two branches at every place two branches at every place two branches two branches this is dipodial branching so the stem can be branched or unbranched if it is branched it can show one branch it can show dipodial branch the leaves if you talk the leaf can be small the leaf can be big fern leaf you are seeing there is a big leaf example for macrophyllous selaginella equisetum microphyllous leaf in ncrt they have given four pictures the first picture we will draw it it is selaginella the second picture is horse tail which is equisetum the third picture is fern terrace and the fourth picture is salvinia four pictures are there basing on the pictures also also in neat they will ask you questions on labelings they will ask you questions okay children so understood this much part we told the characteristics we told why it is called pteridophyte who is father of pteridology and why are they called botanical snakes and they are terrestrial plants but there are some aquatic plants we made a code called sam to remember them the dominant stage is a sporophyte means it is 2n and it is a plant body it has true roots true stems true leaves we talked here now we are telling that on the leaves the reproductive parts are there on the leaf it has sporangia the leaves will have sporangia the leaves which have sporangia are called sporophylls the sporangia are on the leaves such leaves are called sporophylls in some plants the sporophylls are distinct they are compact they make structures called strobili and cones strobili you can see in horse tail equisetum cone you can find it in selaginella so the sporophyll where the structures are there sporangia are there they are distinct they make compact structures like a strobili or a cone now the sporangia contains spore mother cells sporangia is on the leaf leaf is diploid it contains spore mother cells the spore mother cell will undergo meiosis reduction division to make four haploid spores all the spores are same spores so have homosporous condition to understand the life cycle i have taken the pictorial diagram of fern plant let us see this is a fern plant plant body we told the plant body the dominant stage in the life cycle is sporophyte sporophyte is a plant body here is a plant body the plant body is sporophyte and it is 2n so it has roots they are adventitious roots it has stem this is the stem and this is pinnately compound leaf feather like leaves from here only it got the plant name called pteridophyte on the leaves it has certain sporangia reproductive structures called sori so these are compact structures called sori sori contains sporangia the sori contains sporangia this is sporangia sporangia contains spore mother cells the spore mother cells undergo meiosis after meiosis the sporangia when it bursts at the mouth called stomium the spores are released the spores are homosporous i showed all the spores as same because they are homosporous the spores on germination spores are haploid spores on germination will form haploid stages called gametophytic stage and it is called as prothallus heart shaped prothallus is formed in the life cycle of fern plant this is fern plant in the fern plant we are telling the spores which are formed after reduction division will form heart shaped prothallus which represents the gametophyte now this heart shaped gametophyte it is green it is photosynthetic it is independent one important point children in pteridophytes which was asked in neat 2017 paper like uh, in which plants both gametophyte and sporophyte are independent means it is pteridophytes only this is a plant body plant body is green only so it is it is anyway independent sporophyte is anyway independent now see here this is gametophyte this is also green this is also photosynthetic this is also independent so only in pteridophytes we can see both the generations gametophytic generation and sporophytic generation both are independent as in neat 2017 examination so the gametophyte which is heart shaped which is prothallus bears the reproductive structures called antheridia and archegonia it has multicellular rhizoids also these are rhizoids at the top at the notch female reproductive organ archegonium will be there if this is a heart shaped prothallus on the top they have female reproductive structures 
at the bottom they have male reproductive structures club shaped male reproductive organ antheridia flask shaped female reproductive organ called archegonia will be there so this is antheridia club shaped structure so it forms anthrozoids multi ciliated male gametes will be formed these male gametes since they are in water the, the male gametes will swim in water they'll swim in water and then they will reach the archegonium inside the archegonium this is a egg cell so they swim and they reach here and fertilization will happen inside the archegonium and zygote will be formed inside the archegonium zygote develops into embryo inside the archegonium now this zy embryo is developing into sporophyte so embryo it is two in because male gamete is in female gamete is in gametes have few to make embryo embryo will become 2n so 2n stage means it is sporophyte so you can see this archegonium is here this archegonium is here at that means inside the archegonium embryo is developing so embryo is on gametophyte this is the young sporophyte which is on the gametophyte later it grows into a fresh plant later it grows into a fresh plant i think you understood the life cycle of fern plant you understood the life cycle of fern plant it has adventitious roots it has erect stem or prostrate stem it has leaves the leaves contain sporangia such leaves are called sporophylls the sporangia contains spore mother cells spore mother cells undergo meiotic division to form homosporous condition spores which are haploid earn germination will form haploid gametophyte which is heart shaped which is green photosynthetic multicellular independent it bears the reproductive organs called anthridia archegonia antheridia which is club shaped which forms multi ciliated anthrozoids male gametes which swims and reaches the archegonial mouth they release the male gametes here fertilization will happen inside the archegonium and zygote will be formed inside the archegonium embryo development also happens inside the archegonium archegonium is on the gametophyte archegonium which is develop uh, embryo which is developing into sporophyte is on the gametophyte then it develops into a fresh plant Take Take a screenshot. We will discuss. All right. So when we are telling that pteridophytes are homosporous. Pteridophytes are homosporous except Salvinia selaginella, which are heterosporous. We talked about fern. Fern is homosporous only. There are some plants like Salvinia selaginella. They are heterosporous. Now what happens in Salvinia and selaginella? Let us see. Bryophytes are homosporous. Pteridophytes are also homosporous, except Salvinia and Selaginella. In Salvinia and Selaginella, we find heterosporous condition. What do you mean by heterosporous condition? Heterosporous condition means microspores and megaspores will be formed. Haploid microspores and haploid megaspores will be formed. Now, microspore develop into male gametophyte. Micro means small. Microspore develops into male gametophyte. And macrospore, which is haploid. Macrospore develops into female gametophyte. Microspore develops into male gametophyte. Macrospore develops into female gametophyte here. Now these gametophytes, the gametophyte, it will release. What the male gametophyte will release? It will release male gametes. The male gamete goes and fuses. The female gamete will, uh, the female gametophyte will release egg. Now the male gamete goes and fuses with the egg, and this uh, forms zygote. The zygote develops into embryo, 
and the embryo is on the plant body itself the female gametophyte will be retained on the sporophyte for a variable period of time i think we understood about the life cycle so this is the life cycle we tell most of the pteridophytes are homospores only they produce same type of spores except salvinia and selaginella which are heterosporous the spores on germination they form inconspicuous small but multicellular it is free living it is photosynthetic it is gametophyte it is called as prothallus this prothallus requires cool damp shady places to grow that is why because of this requirement that the gametophyte requires water it requires cool damp shady places the anthrozoids also should swim and reach the archegonial winter water is required for fertilization pteridophytes distribution is restricted to narrow geographical areas where water is there gymnosperms and angiosperms are around us so they are dominant plants why bryophytes and pteridophytes did not flourish means for sexual reproduction they require water and for the development of gametophytes also they require water understood children now let us talk about the classification of pteridophytes so if we talk about the classification of pteridophytes pteridophytes are divided into four classes algae are divided into three classes bryophytes are divided into two classes but pteridophytes are divided into four classes what are the four classes the first class is called xylopsida under xylopsida xylotum as an example the second class is called lycopsida under lycopsida lycopodium and selaginella are the examples now if we have to see the third class and the fourth class also so xylopsida lycopsida spinopsida so under spinopsida equisetum equisetum means horse tail equisetum is called horse tail plant and the th uh, last class is called pteropsida under pteropsida teres dryopteris ediantum caudatum walking fern ediantum caudatum is called walking fern these are the examples pteridophytes are broadly divided into four classes the first class is called xylopsida xylotum is example the second class is lycopsida lycopodium selaginella are the examples the third class is spinopsida equisetum horse tail is an example the fourth class advanced class is pteropsida teris means fern dryopteris is also a type of fern ediantum caudatum is called walking for so these are the examples under the four classes now if we have to talk about the economic importance if we have to talk about the economic importance of pteridophytes now they act as soil binders since they are small plants trees are not there so the roots can hold the water first point we can tell they act as soil binders selaginella is called a sanjeevani so means it has medicinal values selaginella is called sanjeevani it is called it's having medicinal values then it is having medicinal values and even though they are not having flowers the leaves itself are attractive structures means there are some pteridophytes like ferns which are ornamental plants they are grown as ornamental plants because of their feathery leaf like structures only three economic importance are there their soil binders they have certain medicinal values and some are ornamental like terris so we have seen the characteristics we have seen the alternative names of pteridophytes also we have seen the life cycle we talked about the classification and we talked about the economic importance of pteridophytes take a screenshot then we will go to gymnosperms now we'll discuss about gymnosperms we finished algae the primitive plants then we came to bryophytes the first land plants but they don't possess vascular tissue then we talked about pteridophytes they are the land plants which possess vascular tissue now we have to discuss about gymnosperms and angiosperms the word gymna means naked 
sperma means seed means they are naked seeded plants means ovule develops into seed but that ovule usually what we understand in angiosperms is ovule is covered by ovary but here since ovary is not there the ovule when it gets fertilized it gets converted into seed only naked seeded plants are called gymnosperms the word gymnosperm was used by theophastus father of botany is theophastus father of zoology or father of biology is aristotle now i wrote some points here let us discuss these points okay so they are embryophytes embryon embryonic stages there in the life cycle they are embryophytes they have vascular tissue they are tracheophytes they have exposed reproductive parts means they are phanerogams and they have the reproductive structure as archegonium female reproductive structure is called archegonium so archegonate and they form seeds sperms so that's why they are called spermatophytes so what did i write gymnosperms gobel called gymnosperms as phanerogams without ovaries gymnosperms and angiosperms comes under phanerogams bryophytes and pteridophytes comes under cryptogams what do you mean by cryptogams the reproductive parts are hidden what do you mean by phanerogams the reproductive parts are exposed so here gymnosperms are phanerogams but they don't have ovary they have only ovules so gobel called gymnosperms as phanerogams without ovary then gymno means naked sperma means seeded means they are naked seeded plants naked seeded plants why they are naked seeded ovary is not there only ovule is there now they have embryo in their life cycle so they are embryophytic they have archegonium the female sex organ so we can also call them as archegonate they have vascular tissue tracheids that's why they are called as tracheophytic and they produce seeds which are called as sperms that's why they are called as spermatophytes and the word gymnosperma was used by a scientist called theophastus now one side they resemble pteridophytes other side they resemble angiosperms in which way they are resembling angiosperms means forming seeds seed is a end product of sexual reproduction in which manner they resemble this side pteridophytes means they form sporangia sporangia uh, sporangium right so one side they resemble pteridophytes in making sporangia other side they resemble angiosperms by forming seeds so they have this characters also they have this characters also now gymnosperms are distributed throughout the world gymnosperms and angiosperms are the dominant plants of the plant kingdom so that means they are distributed all throughout the world that's why they have dominated now gymnosperms are represented mainly uh, by living fossils so there are some living fossils also there are some living genera also what do you mean by living fossil living fossil means from years together it is there without showing any changes and only one genera is there rest all members in that class became extinct and this in uh, near future it will also become extinct because it's not showing in ad any adaptations any modifications it's not showing so gymnosperms includes many living fossils cycas is a living fossil which comes under gymnosperm only and next one ginkgo is also a living fossil cycas ginkgo are examples for living fossils in ncrt we can see three pictures the first picture under gymnosperms they have given cycas the second picture they have given pinus the third picture they have given ginkgo i'm talking about the first plant and the third plant which we are considering them as living fossils because so from long time onwards they are there without showing any changes or adaptations gymnosperms were there from dinosaurs time onwards means from jurassic time onwards till now they are there okay so they are they are represented by living fossils also living genera also so i just now i told you they are there from that time so the conditions at dinosaur times are very harsh temperature is very high so that is why gymnosperms will show xerophytic adaptations so what are the xerophytic adaptations we'll see when we talk about the stem root and leaf there so we can just tell now here there are xerophytic and they are evergreen evergreen means the leaves will not fall down always like uh, date palm tree like coconut tree the leaves will withstand if you have seen the cycus you can see the leaves are permanent so we call them as evergreen leaves so they are xerophytic they are evergreen and mainly they are woody means they are trees and they are perennial perennial means they live for many years they are xerophytic they are evergreen they are woody and they are perennials aquatic forms are absent 
there are no aquatic forms in angiosperms aquatic forms will be there but in gymnosperms aquatic forms are absent now mainly there are trees herbs and shrubs are also there ginkgo if you take netum if you take welvichia if you take their shrubs so few herbs and shrubs will be there but mainly there are trees so i think we understood this much part of the information now let us see what we have written there the smallest gymnosperm is called jamia the smallest gymnosperm is called jamia pygima so after completing this chapter i'll make a pictorial view of all the plants which come under this plant kingdom you can see that video so this zamia i'll share you there the picture of zamia zamia pygma is the smallest gymnosperm and the tallest gymnosperm the largest gymnosperm is redwood tree is called sequoia zyga dendritica sequoia dendron giganticum is called as redwood tree it is 100 meters tall or it is even above 100 meters tall also in california there is a redwood garden so that tall they are so this is the largest gymnosperm the smallest gymnosperm will be of a finger size what is it called zamia now uh, algae exhibits haplontic life cycle bryophytes and pteridophytes will exhibit haplo diplontic life cycle gymnosperms and angiosperms exhibits diplontic life cycle means the dominant stage is diploid stage diploid stage in the life cycle of plant is 2n sporophyte that means the root stem leaves are diploid so the dominant stage in the life cycle is diplontic it is sporophyte the sporophyte means it is a plant it is evergreen which type of root system it has which type of stem which type of leaf i have written here let us see since we are telling there are trees tap root should be there so the root system is tap root now when we take cycus it has a different type of root association and pinus if you go it has a different type of root association in cycus they have some uh, roots which are coming up they are called positively phototrophic roots usually roots will go into positively geotrophic they are but in cycus some roots will project up so they are positively phototrophic what are they called corolloid roots the corolloid roots of cycus will show symbiotic associations with blue green algae like nostoc and anabina so which will do nitrogen fixation which plant needs so in tap roots of cycus the corolloid roots not the other roots when we are talking about the corolloid roots the corolloid roots of cycus will show blue green algae and this blue green algae in cycus it helps in nitrogen fixation we can write it helps in nitrogen fixation in the same manner when we talk about pinus the second picture in ncert under gymnosperms is pinus in pinus we see symbiotic associations with fungi fungi means myco root means rhiza mycorrhizal associations we find in pinus came so many times in neat examinations what is mycorrhiza mycorrhiza means it is symbiotic associations of fungi with the roots of higher plants like pinus the fungi will absorb more and more water since they are zero phytic the fungi will absorb more and more water more and more minerals and gives it to the pinus plant so this is about root system now let us talk about stem we are telling it is woody woody means it will be massive and uh, a tree cannot crawl a tree cannot crawl that means it is erect only and it is woody the stem is massive the stem is woody and the stem is erect branched stem we can see in some plants unbranched stem we can see in some plants cycus if you see like coconut it will be there means it is unbranched pinus and cedrus if you see it is branched so branched stems are found in pinus and cedrus members unbranched stem we can find it in cycus now dimorphic branches are there now here we told branches are there in pinus and cedrus dimorphic branching what do you mean by dimorphic branching means long stem will be there dwarf stem also will be there so if i have to show here this is a long stem on the long stem dwarf stem will be there and the dwarf stems are arranged in acropetal manner what do you mean by acropetal manner bigger branches are at the bottom as you are coming up the branches are becoming less so this is called as dimorphic stem one long stem is there which is called as long shoot and these are dwarf shoots and how are the dwarf shoots arranged on the long shoot means in acropetal manner means older branches at the bottom younger branches at the tip and on this the leaves will be arranged in pinus needle like leaves will be arranged so the dwarf branches which are having needle like leaves are called as foliar spurs they are called as foliar spurs because of this arrangement the pinus plant will appear like a cone it's called coniferous plant as a coniferous tree okay and on these dwarf branches we are telling needle like leaves will be arranged 
on this dwarf branches needle like leaves will be arranged understood children so this is about the stem root we told tap root the coralloid roots of cycas will show associations with cyanobacteria like nostoc and anabinum which helps in nitrogen fixation then the other roots pinus will show symbiotic association with fungi which helps in absorption of water and minerals talking about stem we told the stem is woody the stem is massive the stem is erect and dimorphic stems are there in the case of pinus now the long stem is called long shoot and the short branches are called as dwarf shoots and these dwarf shoots are arranged acropetal manner giving cone shaped appearance and talking about the leaves we told zero phytic adaptations the leaves will show what are the zero phytic adaptations the leaves will show means we have written here needle like leaves so why the leaf has modified into a needle to reduce the surface area and it has a thick cuticle the leaves of gymnosperms will have very thick waxy cuticle to reduce transpiration they have sunken stomata also like xerophytic plants so having thick cuticle having needle like leaves having sunken stomata all these are xerophytic adaptations only now the leaf what did we write dimorphic leaf dimorphic leaf means on the wooden trunk some small spine like projections will be there if you go and check cycas plant or pinus plant so on the wooden trunk the small spiny brown colored projections are called as scaly leaves they are non photosynthetic and they are deciduous they'll fall down they are present on the trunk whereas the other leaves which are present on the main axis and all so they are evergreen they are evergreen in the case of pinus and they are not deciduous scaly leaves are deciduous so scaly leaves are deciduous they are small and brown and they are non photosynthetic they are present on the main trunk whereas the other leaf is called evergreen leaf if it is needle like where do we find it in pinus if it is a simple leaf having lobes ginkgo if it is simple leaf having no lobes gnetum is an example and if it is a compound leaf pinnately compound leaf cycas leaf is an example so this is about root shoot and stem and this is about introduction take a screenshot we will continue so i'm telling the leaves of the gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand extreme temperatures extreme wind so what are the adaptations we'll just write it down as i already told you they have sunken stomata they have thick cuticle needle like leaves so all these are the adaptations to sustain in zero phytic conditions now let us write down so we're telling the leaves of the gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand leaves of gymnosperms are well adapted to withstand extreme conditions what are the extreme conditions like high temperature extreme conditions like temperature we can tell wind we can tell it can tolerate extreme temperature extreme wind and humidity also what are the adaptations if we have to list down so we are telling so it has needle like leaves to reduce the surface area where do we find it in the case of pinus needle like leaves which will reduce the surface area so transpiration will be less reduce surface area this is one factor we can tell and the other factor we are telling it has sunken stomata the stomata are not exposed sunken stomata so then third one we are telling they have very thick cuticle thick waxy cuticle so these are some adaptations which the leaf will show to sustain in zero conditions now when we have to talk about the reproductive structures here let us see they have we told that gymnosperms resemble steridophytes in having sporangia now where are the sporangia present the sporangia are present on leaves they are present near the leaves and such type of the leaves are called sporophylls so bryophytes and pteridophytes are homosporous gymnosperms and angiosperms are heterosporous let us make this point very clear gymnosperms and angiosperms are heterosporous means male spore and female spore can be distinguished so gymnosperms are heterosporous now spores are formed inside the sporangia the sporangia are born on special leaves which are called as sporophylls sporangia are born where are they born they are born on 
special leaves which are called sporophyll phylla means leaf they are called sporophylls and since we are telling the sporangias are different the spores are different so we can tell these sporophylls which are clustered together if the sporophylls are clustered together if they are compacted together we call them as cone or strobili the same point we used in pteridophyte also the sporophyll is clustered to form compact structure the chlorophyll is clustered to form compact structure what is it compact structure called cone or strobili it's called cone or strobili and these strobili which have microsporangia are called male strobili and the cones which have megasporangia are called female strobili so the strobili which have microsporangia which have microsporangia what are they called they are called male strobili and the strobili which have megasporangia what are they called the strobili which have megasporangia are called female strobili now what did we discuss here we were telling that what are the adaptations the leaf will show to sustain under high temperature humidity and wind so we told they're having needle like leaves they'll have sunken stomata and they'll have thick cuticle and then we told gymnosperms and angiosperms are heterosporous and where are the spores produced the spores are made inside the sporangia where are the sporangia present the sporangia present near the special leaves they're called as sporophylls and the spores are heterosporous means microsporophyll is there megasporophyll is there microsporophyll is called male cone or male strobili megasporophyll is called female cone or female strobili take a screenshot we will continue right i'll drop that also we'll see the reproductive part of gymnosperms the smallest one as i wrote here what is it zamia the tallest one is sequoia sequoia is called redwood tree it's a very tall plant above 100 meters tall also it can grow yeah so we told gymnosperms are heterosporous so the male cones or the male strobili what do they have the male strobili have microsporangia the microsporangia contains microspore mother cells since we are telling the plant body is diploid it is sporophyte it will make spores it is 2l the microspore mother cell what is mmc it is microspore mother cell which is 2l undergoes reduction division or meiotic division it undergoes reduction division or we can tell it is meiotic division it undergoes reduction division or meiotic division to form four microspores the sporophyte made for microspores and these microspores are haploid or diploid they are haploid because you have done reduction division they are haploid if they are haploid they represent gametophytic generation so since the life cycle is diploidic we tell the gametophytic generation is reduced so this is a reduced male gametophyte so the microspores what are they called as microspores represent they represent the reduced male gametophytic generation they are male right they since they are haploid gametophyte so they represent reduced male gametophytic stage what can we call them as these microspores are called as pollen grains they are called as pollen grains now these pollen grains how do they travel by wind means what pollination is it anemophily the pollen grains travel by air what is that pollination called anemophily right now let us talk about female strobili what does the female strobili has 
the female strobula has megasporangium the female strobula has megasporangium the megasporangium in gymnosperm is called as ovule the megasporangium in gymnosperm is called as ovule the ovule of gymnosperm how is it it is orthotropous it is orthotropous and it has only one tegment unitegmic it is orthotropous and unitegmic means I should draw like this. This is a body and I have to show unitegmic condition means one in tegment only and this is a nucellus and orthotropous. Micropylar end, colossal end and the funicle are on the same axis. So the female strobili contains megasporangium. The megasporangium is called as ovule. The ovule of gymnosperm is orthotropous. This position is orthotropous where the micropylar end, colossal end and the funicle are on the same axis and it is unitegmic means covered by one in tegument only what is the center one called the center one is called new cellus now what happens one of the cell of the new cellus one cell of the new cellus behaves like megaspore mother cell spore mother cell so i'm just writing here one cell of new cellus one cell of new cellus turns into megaspore mother cell it turns into megaspore mother cell. It turns into megaspore mother cell which is 2N. It will undergo meiotic division. It will undergo meiotic division to form 1, 2, 3, 4 megaspores. It forms 1, 2, 3, 4 megaspores. It will form 4 megaspores. Out of these 4 megaspores. So I can remove this and I can show you 4 4 megaspores 1 2 3 4 megaspores are there now out of 4 megaspores which are haploid because reduction division you have done out of 4 megaspores 3 megaspores will degenerate so 3 megaspores degenerate and the one functional megaspore one functional megaspore which is there undergoes mitotic divisions it undergoes mitotic divisions to form female gametophyte. It forms a female gametophyte. So what are we telling children here? We are telling that female strobili contains megasporangium. Megasporangium means it is ovule. Here is the ovule. The direction what is placed is orthotrophus having one integument. Inside is nucellus. One nucellar cell behaves like a megaspore mother cell. That megaspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division to form four megaspores. Out of the four megaspores, three megaspores will degenerate. So can I show like that? So these three got degenerated. These three got degenerated. Only one functional megaspore will be there. Now this functional megaspore, this functional megaspore will undergo divisions and it will form multicellular 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 cells like that. So it is forming multicellular female gametophyte. And this female gametophyte, this is female gametophyte. This female gametophyte which is haploid is there inside the megasporangium itself. It is there inside the ovule itself. Now these female gametophytic cells if you see the female gametophyte, few cells of the female gametophyte few cells of the female gametophyte they develop into endosperm few cells of the female gametophyte they develop into endosperm what is endosperm endosperm is a nutritive tissue now in gymnosperms endosperm is getting formed before fertilization itself so that is why the endosperm is a pre-fertilization event in gymnosperms and since it is formed from the female gametophyte directly female gametophyte it is n endosperm ploid is also will be n only so i'm taking one two three cells here and i'm telling few cells means two or cells or three cells these cells will turn into the female gametophyte cells will turn into endosperm that means this much what does it become it becomes endosperm what is endosperm endosperm is a nutritive tissue so and the formation of endosperm in gymnosperms is a pre-fertilization event so endosperm formation in gymnosperms is pre-fertilization event 
it is pre fertilization event and the endosperm is haploid remember this what happens to the other cells of the female gametophyte the other cells of the female gametophyte turns into the female reproductive organs called archegoniums the other cells of the female gametophyte will turn into female reproductive structures called archegoniums so one ovule contains two or more archegoniums so here is one archegonium here is other archegonium here is other archegonium in which the egg is there so the other cells means this cell has become one archegonium this cell has become one archegonium this cell has become other archegonium so we are telling the other cells of the female gametophyte develop into two or more archegoniums the other cells will develop into two or more female sex organ called archegonium that's why we are calling them as archegonate now two or more archegoniums again all archegoniums will degenerate only one will remain functional so out of which only one functional archegonium will be there only one functional archegonium will be there now here pollen grains are there these pollen grains by wind pollination they go there so we will tell the pollen grains by anemophily they go and they land here the pollen grains will land here if you take pinus plant in pinus plant the pollen grain is having wings i'm drawing wings here so the wings will help it to fly nicely so it will fly and it will go and land on the megasporangium ovule and it discharges the pollen tube will be formed and it will discharge the male gametes at the mouth of the archegonium see the male gametes are discharged at the mouth of the archegonium so fertilization is internal it is happening inside so fertilization lead to development of zygote zygote develops into embryo since embryo is there we are calling they are embryophytic since the fertilization is happening inside the megasporangium inside the archegonium the female part we are telling it is internal fertilization and since the pollen grain is traveling by wind we are telling it is anemophily in pinus particularly they have wings right so i think you understood about the reproductive structures so we are telling gymnosperms are heterosporous male and female spores are different right this is a male gamete the male gamete is uh, the egg the female gamete is the uh, sorry this is the female gamete female gamete is inside the archegonium the male gamete will be with the pollen grain so the male structures are called strobili they contain microsporangia microsporangia contains microspore mother cells they undergo reduction division to form microspores these microspores will travel by wind pollination take a screenshot we'll continue gymnosperms which exhibit diplontic life cycle the sporophytic stage is dominant and the gametophytic stage is reduced and it's dependent on the sporophyte so if you see the multicellular female gametophyte female gametophyte means it is megasporangium and this is multicellular female gametophyte is retained within the megasporangium this female gametophyte is retained in the megasporangium this is the megasporangium ovule in bryophyte and pteridophytes the gametophyte is independent but in gymnosperms this gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte be clear in bryophytes and pteridophytes the gametophyte is independent whereas in gymnosperms the gametophyte is dependent that's what they told in ncrt unlike bryophytes and pteridophytes in gymnosperms the male as well as female gametophytes they are are not independent means they are dependent they don't have free living existence because they are retaining on the sporophyte they remain or they retain on the sporophyte sporophyte means it's called sporangia right now following fertilization the male gamete will come inside they diffuse with the female gamete fertilization will happen fertilization develops into zygote following fertilization the zygote develops into embryo and embryo develops into zygote into embryo and ovules will develop into seeds the seeds are not enclosed now this complete structure is ovule right this complete structure is ovule this ovule turns into seed whereas this ovule is not enclosed by ovary stigma style and ovary so ovary is not there so that's why we tell they are naked seeds they are naked seeded plants this is the information about gymnosperms take a screenshot then we'll move on to angiosperms the most advanced category of plants
yeah now let us talk about angiosperms the plants which we see around are angiosperms and angiosperms have stigma style ovary ovary is there so that's why ovary will develop into fruit that means seeds are not naked seeds are enclosed by the fruit that's the speciality of angiosperms let us write on they are the dominant plants they divide into two classes called gymnos uh, monocots and dicots angiosperms represent the last group of plants and they are most abundant plants so they are seen in diverse habitats what do you mean by diverse habitats they seen in water also and land also they seen on water also they seen on land also and angiosperms are called as flowering plants flower is a reproductive structure here so if you have to give the names for angiosperms what are the names we can give angiosperms are commonly called as flowering plants and we can tell since they are having embryonic stage we we can also call them as embryophytes and since they have tracheids and vessels they are called tracheophytes also and they have the reproductive parts are exposed the flower is exposed so we can call them as phanerogams and they make seeds so spermatophytes so i think these are the names common names we can give for them they are the only plants which will flower so that's why we are calling them as flowering plants they have embryo in their life stage life cycle so they are called embryophytes they have tracheids and vessels so that's why they are called tracheophytes the reproductive parts are exposed so that's why they are called phanerogams and they form sperms seeds that's why they are called as spermatophytes now here are they naked seeded or the seeds are enclosed by the ovary the seeds are enclosed right so seeds are not naked. naked seeds are not naked instead the seeds are enclosed within the fruit within the fruit the seeds are enclosed now the smallest gymnosperm is ulfia plant which is an aquatic plant and the largest gymnosperm is eucalyptus so we can write that what's the smallest gymnosperm the smallest gymnosperm is ulfia which is aquatic weed very small little bee whereas the largest gymnosperm eucalyptus very tall it's very tall it's a terrestrial plant so if we see what are the benefits we are getting from gymnosperms means some give us food some give us fuel some act as fodder some gives us medicinal values and apart from that so many commercial benefits we can derive from these plants so some they provide food for us some provides fodder fodder means for animals some are medicinal some are medicinal we can tell and commercially so many benefits we can we can get commercial benefits we can get from the plant so we can make wood also from the plant right so food fodder fuel medicinal plants commercial benefits what are the commercial benefits we extract dyes from them we extract scent from them we extract gums from them we extract resins from them all these are different substances right we extract spices from them so all these are the different substances we are extracting from angiosperms take a screenshot we'll continue right since we are telling angiosperms are flowering plants flower is a reproductive part what are the reproductive organs the flower has we can see the life cycle which is mentioned in ncert very clearly about angiosperms so angiosperms have which type of life cycle means diplontic life cycle diplontic life cycle means what is the dominant stage the dominant stage is sporophyte 
gymnosperms and angiosperms both of them exhibit diplontic life cycle diplontic life cycle means the dominant stage is sporophyte means the plant body is sporophyte here the plant body is sporophyte here we'll see the life cycle i'm taking a brassica plant mustard plant to see the life cycle so these are the roots and here are the leaves these are the leaves and this is a fruit silicua we call and here is the mustard flower this is a mustard flower this is a plant we are telling in gymnosperms or in angiosperms the plant body is sporophyte means what did we draw we draw the plant body and we are telling it is sporophyte in which root stem and leaves are vegetative parts root stem and leaf what are they they are called vegetative parts they help the plant to grow whereas flower if you take flower as a reproductive part why did you consider flower as a reproductive part means it contains male and female reproductive organs and rhizome and gynoecium this is the sporophyte on the sporophyte here is the flower flower contains male reproductive organ the male reproductive organ is called and rhizome it contains anther and a filament and what is the female reproductive organ it's called stigma style and this is a ovary inside the ovary it contains ovule inside the ovary it contains ovule so this is the male reproductive organ of the flower and this is a female reproductive organ of the flower so anther and filament here stigma style and ovary here now inside the anther we find microsporangium each lobe of the anther contains two microsporangiums the microsporangium what is this it is micro sporangium the microsporangium contains pollen mother cells or spore mother cells they undergo meiotic division to make four pollen grains what are these called they are called pollen grains now or we can call them as microspores also they are called microspores now this microspore or pollen grain so it shows a thick wall which is called exine and inner wall is called intine it has a spindle shaped cell called vegetative generative cell it has a irregular cell called vegetative cell so here we are drawing one cell pollen grain here i am showing you two celled pollen grain this is two celled pollen grain and this pollen grain will germinate so when the pollen grain is germinating it makes a pollen tube through the pollen tube male gametes are coming so this is a germinating pollen grain what is this called this is called germinating pollen grain now the male gametes here uh, will go inside the male gametes will come and land here this is pollination if they go the pollen tube will be formed inside now what is this this is nucellus inside nucellus embryo sac will be there if we have to draw that this is a embryo sac which contains three cells here which are the vegetative cells they are called as antipodals and here we have three cells these are the lateral cells they have finger like projections called filiform apparatus and these two cells together are called synergids these two synergids at the center they are having the female gamete which is called egg and here are the two polar nuclei these three are antipodals these three center egg is there and two synergids are there and these are the polar nuclei now the male gametes are coming and fusing with the egg if the male gamete comes and fuses with the egg it develops into zygote so now what happens fertilization happened fertilization happened fertilization results in development of zygote this is zygote now what happens to zygote zygote develops into embryo brassica is a dicot plant in dicot the characteristic shape is heart shaped embryo so the zygote when it is developing into embryo it forms a characteristic chordate embryo heart shaped embryo so this is seen only in dicots 
so these are the suspensor cells and all these are the embryo cells which will form epidermal tissue system ground tissue system all those things so these are the, these are the cells what is this called heart shaped embryo this is heart shaped embryo which is characteristic of dicot plant and this embryo delves into plant the embryo delves into plant in ncrt they have mentioned us about the life cycle of gymnosperms so we are and sorry angiosperms angiosperms are the dominant plants angiosperms are found in various habitats angiosperms are called as flowering plants angiosperms do not have naked seeds the seeds are enclosed by ovary we are telling so here i am showing you this is stigma and this is style and this is ovary inside the ovary ovule is there so ovule after fertilization develops into seed ovary after fertilization develops into fruit now if you take any fruit like apple fruit if you take now this is a fruit inside the fruit you have seeds like this so means the seeds are not naked here the seeds are enclosed by the fruit so that's why we call angiosperms are they are not naked seeded the seeds are enclosed by the fruits now smallest gymnosperm or smallest angiosperm what example we have taken it is wolfia tallest angiosperm we have taken eucalyptus coming to the life cycle they exhibit diplontic life cycle means the dominant stage is sporophyte the sporophyte is a plant body we draw the plant body we have seen the root shoot and leaves they are the vegetative parts the reproductive part is flower the male reproductive organ is stamen it contains anther and filament the female reproductive organ is gynoecium stigma silent ovary the anther lobes contains microsporangiums microsporangium contain pollen mother cells pollen mother cells will make pollen grains or microspores the microspore when it germinates it discharges the male gametes into the female gamete where is the female gamete inside the embryo sac embryo sac is inside the ovule ovule is inside the ovary so then the male gametes are coming down and they fuse with this egg male and female gamete fusion is called fertilization fertilization lead to development of zygote zygote develops into embryo in dicot plants characteristic heart shaped embryo will be there so this is about angiosperms now one male there are two male gametes here this is the first male gamete and this is the second male gamete the first male gamete fuses with the female gamete and it makes zygote what happens to the second male gamete the second male gamete comes and fuses with the two polar nuclei these two polar nuclei are there they fuse with the second male gamete since three are fusing we call it as a triple fusion and since it is a second fertilization first fertilization led to the formation of zygote and embryo since this is a second time fertilization fertilization we call together as double fertilization which is a characteristic feature of angiosperms and this 2n two polar nuclei with the second male gamete they will fuse to make pen primary endospermic nucleus which will form endosperm it forms endosperm so this is about angiosperms take a screenshot then we will talk about the life cycles of plants Angiosperms are divided into two classes called dicotyledonae and monocotyledonae. We'll finish off the differences between dicots and monocots, and then we'll get into the life cycles of plants. Now we we have seen so many dicots. Rose is a dicot. Hibiscus is a dicot. Now under monocots, if you have to see, sugarcane is a monocot. Grass is a monocot. Lily is a monocot. Onion is a monocot. All these are the examples. Now dicot means the dicot seed has two cotyledons, whereas means if you take groundnut or cashew nut, when you open it, you can see two cotyledons. So a dicot seed has two cotyledons. When you open rice or wheat, only one cotyledon will be there. Since one cotyledon is there, they are called monocots. Since two cotyledons are there, we call them as dicots. In dicots, which root system will be there? Dicots are mostly trees. That's why they need tap root system. monocots they are bushy they are shrubs so they need fibrous root system now stem if you see they are woody also they are herbaceous also but in monocots secondary growth will not be there so they are herbaceous only woody is absent coming to the leaf dicot leaf will be having a dorsal surface and ventral surface dicot leaf is dorsi ventral leaf whereas monocot leaf grass leaf if you see maize leaf you see corn leaf if you see it is like this so it's called isobilateral leaf dicot leaf 
leaf has dorsal face and ventral face whereas monocot leaf is isobilateral leaf now in dicot so we tell tetramerous or pentamerous means the number of calyx corolla sepals petals andrisium gynesium there will be in multiples of four or five tetramerosity and pentamerosity whereas in monocots the number of sepals the number of petals the number of stamens will be in multiples of three only it is trimerous now dicot seeds the embryo will consume the complete endosperm so that's why they are non-endospermic monocot seeds will retain bulky amount of endosperm that's why they are endospermic dicot seed shows a characteristic heart shaped embryo dicot seed shows a characteristic heart shaped embryo whereas that embryo stage is absent in monocot examples for dicots lot many examples are there we have taken the example of pea rice brinjal tomato here for monocot also so many examples lilies is an example of monocot family only so in liliaceae colchisum will be there uh, uh, allium onion will be there garlic will be there rice wheat corn all these are the examples of monocots children with this we finished angiosperms the last group of advanced plants we finished and at the last to the chapter they're asking us to study about the plant life cycles now if you see in our life cycle what are the two stages childhood stage and adult stage right so before maturity and after maturity you can divide in the same manner in plant also there are two stages in their life cycle gametophyte stage and sporophyte stage there are two stages in the plant life cycle gametophyte stage and sporophyte stage gametophyte stage means the stage of a plant body which makes gametes sporophytic stage means the stage of the plant body which makes spores are called a sporophytic stage right gametophytic stage represents the haploid genome sporophytic stage represents diploid genome two n here and n here now plant will show mitotic division in the introduction they have given like in plants both haploid and diploid stages divide by mitosis n also can undergo mitotic division can make n 2n also can undergo mitotic division and make 2n plant body so haploid plant body produces gametes by mitotic division if the body is haploid then it cannot undergo meiotic division the haploid plant body should undergo mitotic division only to make gametes haploid plant body means gametophyte gametophyte is making gametes so then that is called gametophytic stage now the gametes which are haploid male gamete and female gamete they fuse when n and n are fusing 2n 2n leads to fertilization fertilization leads to zygote zygote will develop into multicellular sporophytic plant body now this multicellular sporophytic plant body so from gametophyte we came to sporophyte this multicellular sporophytic gametophytic body sporophytic body what it will do it will undergo meiotic division if it undergoes meiotic division it will form haploid spores the spores they germinate and they make the plant body again that's what they wrote after fertilization the diploid zygote will undergo mitotic division only and it makes diploid sporophytic plant body sporophyte is 2n so it's making sporophytic plant body this sporophytic plant body should undergo which division to make haploid spores meiotic division the sporophytic plant body undergoes meiotic division to make haploid spores the haploid spores they form haploid plant body again haploid spores on germination they undergo mitotic division to form the gametophyte again so we came through the cycle so thus if you see the life cycle of sexual life cycle of plants there are two generations gametophytic generation sporophytic generation gamete making generation spore making generation haploid generation diploid generation so there is alternation it's a cycle this alternation among generations this alternation among generations and they're different from each other they're heteromorphic to each other so every plant take algae bryophyte terophyte gymnosperm angiosperm they exhibit both gametophyte and sporophytic stage but the duration is variable in some plants gametophyte is of more duration and sporophyte is of limited duration restricted duration like that the durations are variable on this basis we can divide plants into three groups called haplontic life cycle plants diplontic life cycle plants and haplodiplontic life cycle plants we'll see the life cycles take a screenshot of this So there are three life cycles. The first life cycle will tell haplontic life cycle. 
what is haplontic life cycle we will just talk this haplontic life cycle is exhibited by majority of the algae is exhibited by majority of algae okay now here we are telling alternation of generations gametophyte and sporophyte so when we are telling it is haplontic life cycle means haploid stage is dominant means gametophytic stage is dominant so then we will tell the plant body here in algae the plant body is gametophyte the plant body is gametophyte and the plant body gametophyte grows the plant body which is haploid it grows and if it has to make gametes which division it is n it will do mitotic division only to make gametogenesis so if i am writing if it is undergoing gametogenesis which division it is undergoing to make gametogenesis mitotic division it will undergo mitotic division to make gametes now these gametes when they fuse so it made gametes gametes have fused when they fuse zygote will be formed when zygote comes it is no longer a n it becomes 2n so then i am writing syngamy happened when syngamy happens zygote is formed syngamy happened zygote is formed when zygote comes 2n is there when 2n comes it represents sporophyte so the 2n stage is called sporophyte now this 2n sporophyte now what this will do it will undergo meiotic division the 2n1 undergoes meiosis if it undergoes meiosis it forms haploid spores since it is making spores it is called sporophytic it undergoes haploid meiotic division to make haploid spores now these spores will make the plant again the spores on germination will make up the plant body again now if you see here we'll use this with red color only because it is haploid so from where to where diploid stage is there and haploid stage is there all this is haploid stage only only when the zygote is made only when the zygote is made from here you can take from syngamy from syngamy till meiosis this much is diploid rest all is haploid so such a life cycle where haploid stage is dominant is called haplontic life cycle the life cycle where haploid stage is dominant is called haploid life cycle shall we see it once again clearly haplontic life cycle is exhibited by algae we are telling it's exhibited by algae that means the plant body here is gametophyte gametophyte means it is haploid now the plant body will grow at the time of maturation when it has to make gametes which division it has to undergo meiotic division to make gametes so it's called gametogenesis and then it makes haploid gametes these haploid gametes when they are fusing the haploid gametes when they are fusing it will become diploid so fusion of gametes leads to syngamy syngamy leads to formation of zygote zygote is 2n represents a sporophyte the zygote immediately undergoes meiosis to form reduction division they undergo reduction division to form haploid spores what are they haploid spores the haploid spores on germination will form the plant body again so in the entire life cycle if you see only there is a particular stage where 2n stage is there it is represented by single celled zygote only here right so after syngamy till here this is sporophyte i use blue color the remaining thing is gametophyte which is dominant here gametophyte is dominant here so we can tell here in haplontic plants the sporophytic generation is represented by single cell zygote goat in haplontic life cycle the sporophytic generation is represented by single celled zygote it is 
it is represented by single cell zygote and it is dominant it is dominant no it is nominal it is independent or dependent it is not independent it is dependent so the sporophyte is not independent means it is dependent it is dependent on gametophyte it is dependent on gametophyte such a life cycle is called as haplontic life cycle exhibited by majority of the algae now coming to the other life cycle if you see the other extreme it is diplontic life cycle diplontic life cycle is exhibited by gymnosperms and angiosperms It's exhibited by gymnosperms and angiosperms. Now, in gymnosperms and angiosperms, the diploid stage is dominant. Means the sporophytic stage is dominant. So here we can tell the sporophyte is dominant. We'll start with sporophyte. The sporophyte, which is 2N, which we call it as the plant body. So the sporophyte grows nicely, and when it has to undergo meiosis to make the spores, the spores, the sporophyte will grow and it undergoes, it should undergo meiosis to make spores, right? So when once the spores are formed, which are haploid, it represents the gametophytic generation. When once the spores are formed, it represents gametophytic generation they are haploid now these spores right they undergo they form gametophyte and they undergo gametogenesis and when the gametogenesis fuses when the gametes are fusing again syngamy will come When syngamy comes, again 2N will happen. So, zygote will be formed. Syngamy leads to formation of zygote again. Zygote is 2N. Zygote develops into sporophyte. If you see this life cycle, here we are telling the plant body sporophyte. The plant body, root, stem, leaves are sporophyte. They grow nicely and then they produce sporangia or they produce flowers. And then there they undergo meiosis, the anther microsporangium undergoes meiosis to produce microspores pollen grains the pollen mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce pollen grain the megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to produce embryo sac it contains egg so then they are haploid that represents the gametophytic generation so the pollen grain produces male gametes that is gametogenesis the embryo sac produces female gametes when the gametes will fuse zygote will be formed when once zygote comes then it becomes the diploid stage again sporophytic stage again so that means in this life cycle only there is this much stage only there is a reduced stage where n is there rest all plant body sporophyte only such a life cycle is called diplontic life cycle so what can we tell in diplontic life cycle diploid stage is dominant here diploid stage is dominant it is dominant it is green it is photosynthetic and it is independent the diploid stage is green photosynthetic and it is independent it alters with it alters with haploid here we told one cell sporophyte here we are not telling one cell few cells right so it alters with haploid few celled gametophyte this gametophyte is dependent since this is independent, the gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte. And this life cycle is exhibited by which plants? Gymnosperms and angiosperms. Take a screenshot. Yeah, now when we have to talk about the next life cycle, haplodiplontic life cycle, which is intermediate between haplontic and diplontic, is exhibited by gymnosperms and angiosperms. Haplodiplontic life cycle is exhibited by bryophytes and pteridophytes. 
so they have haplontic stage also predominantly and diplontic stage also will be there so they are almost the same since both are there we are calling it as an intermediate life cycle exhibited by bryophytes and pteridophytes especially when we talk about bryophytes in bryophytes the dominant stage the dominant stage is gametophyte since it is gametophyte the dominant stage is a plant body the plant body of bryophyte is thallus like it can be thallus or it can be erect and it is green it is photosynthetic since it is photosynthetic it is independent and it alters with so we are telling the bryophyte marcantia funeria the plant body is gametophyte it can be thallus like it can be erect it is multicellular it is green it is photosynthetic and it is independent and it alters with when we have to tell it alters with short lived sporophyte it alters with short lived sporophyte and this sporophyte is completely either completely or partially dependent it is partially dependent on what it is dependent on gametophyte in marcantia it is completely dependent and in funeria it is partially dependent on gametophyte and the sporophyte is differentiated into foot seta and capsule so such a life cycle where this is also there and this is also there is called as haplodiplontic life cycle this is about bryophytes when we have to talk about pteridophytes in pteridophytes we tell the diploid stage is dominant here the haploid stage is dominant whereas in pteridophytes the diploid stage is dominant and it is the plant body it is the plant body means it is green it is photosynthetic means it is independent and long lived and it alters with it alters with either photosynthetic or saprophytic either photosynthetic or saprophytic multicellular gametophyte so only in pteridophytes the sporophyte and the gametophyte both are independent since the sporophyte is green photosynthetic plant body it can prepare its food it is independent whereas the gametophyte is also photosynthetic or it can be saprophytic where it can take the nutrition from the dead materials so and it is multicellular so pteridophyte means ferns in ferns we have seen prothallus will be heart shaped and these are the rhizoids this is archegonium and these are anthridias right so means this is a gametophyte the gametophyte is green photosynthetic so that's why only in pteridophytes we tell both are independent whereas in bryophytes if you tell the diploid stage is dependent in pteridophytes both are independent so this point they asked in neat 2017 examination like in which group of plants both are independent means it is pteridophytes so this is about life cycles when we have to talk about exceptions fucus which is brown algae exhibits diplontic life cycle like gymnosperms and angiosperms and ectocarpus polysiphonia and kelps exhibits haplodiplontic life cycle like bryophytes and pteridophytes so what are the exceptions the exceptions are are fucus fucus which is a brown algae it exhibits diplontic life cycle and kelps poly siphonia and ectocarpus they exhibit haplodiplontic life cycle like bryophytes and pteridophytes all this is information about the plant kingdom hope you understood the lectures and the content if you really like the content like share subscribe to my channel thank you